Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting and likely disastrously ending episode of After the Fall. Uh, I'm your storyteller, Ryan, and with me are an intrepid band of heroes, none of whom discussed, to my knowledge, uh, which order they were going to introduce themselves in. So, free for all. Hi, I'm John. I, <laughs> I play Isaac, the inquisitive... Uh, artificer who conducts weird science and I'm um, a little elf boy who's a mad scientist in training. I am Clarity. I am playing Captain Nellie Delance, the impulsive rebel who rules the waves. Basically a pirate. Who is also an elf, but a sea elf. And she has nearly mastered her chainsword thing, which is awesome. So close, actually. <laughs> Hi. I'm Tyler. I play Corin Wisevel, who's super smart, dragonborn, and I've never actually said the is a and who thing that everybody else says uh, at the top. So he's an intelligent explorer who calculates the incalculable, and he's the one who made the chain sword. I'm Quinn, a creative seer who has awakened dreams. Uh, have I, I? We said it probably back at the beginning, but I'm a halfling. Like I never say that. But are you? But I'm I'm tall for my yeah. Side. Maybe you're just like a really short human. <laughs> Maybe halflings are not defined half simply wait. by their size. Do mm. halflings have different ears? I don't know. Do they? I don't know. I am leaving it to, up to you. I'm gonna have to research ears of halflings. She keeps them covered by her hair anyway. You yeah, see they them. have big yeah. round ears. Oh, like the ones that stick out. out. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're hair, Ferengi. Her hair down <laughs> for that reason. She doesn't put her hair up because of her ears no. stick out a little bit. It's, it's She's a little embarrassed about it, to be honest. This is canon now. Yes. This is part of her character. She's a, self-conscious about her ears. I have made a note. Last, <laughs> last few episodes and we're still figuring out characters. Well, well if, we're only 12 I, episodes in. Uh, I just, you know, add it as it comes. Main character development in a full campaign isn't a, a thing that happens right away. It happens over time. You yeah. discover the character as you play them. So, you know, if we were going longer than 12 episodes, because you're all going to die tonight. Uh, if we were going longer <laughs> than 12 episodes. It's a nice even number. Right? It is. I mean... Mm -hmm. You don't want to go to 13, right? Because 13... No, no, that's I mean, Unless it was like a Jason, Friday the 13th, yeah. Jason's going to oh, go. That's, that's the spooky number. We want to go. We want to definitely yeah. have that. It's it's October. It's Oh, it's month. it's not spooky enough for you yet? Well, we'll fix that. <laughs> hey, uh, let's talk about what happened last Great. time on After the Fall. Uh, the In-N-Out Salvage crew arrived in the ruins of the Twin Cities from their hometown of Newcastle after a very long and winding road that involved a number of uh, inanimate objects attacking them, floors falling out from underneath them, and one very hungry vampire. The, uh, oh, and um, Barnaby Buttonnose. Was that his name? I think that was two episodes. Yes. Bartleby yes. Buttonnose. Okay. Bartleby Buttonnose, yes. Bartleby. Bartleby. Yeah. Two episodes ago, yep. Yes. I gotta grab that notes. Yeah, last time it was mainly just us getting our making our way to the mall, which included a slime creature that we accidentally let out. <clears throat> of <laughs> yeah, last time was three to four GM intrusions. So Well I am episode. just going to point out that y'all wanted GM intrusions, so... <laughs> Never said that. Yes, more, more. <laughs> For you, Clarity. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you arrived at your destination. The... He just wants XP. I mean, it is one of the main ways you get XP in this game. <laughs> um, you arrived at your destination, the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota. And as you were approaching it, you noticed that it was shrouded 
in this dense fog. Strangely so. Just very ominous, very eerie. You could see, approaching from the south, the, uh, the very end of a blue building of some sort, which uh, historical records indicated was an Ikea. Uh, you made a long loop around, heading into the fog. You found a first floor entrance. You hid the car. You cut through a metal gate uh, that had been lowered over those doors, picked the lock on the door, and let yourselves in. And at the entire time, surrounded by this dense fog where you couldn't really see more than 10 feet in front of you, you've been hearing things. Well, most of you have. Nell has yet to hear anything, so. And seeing things. Oh, did you see something too? Yeah, we uh, saw a green light. Yeah, he, he, we saw the green light at the end of Daisy's dock, and I think that was it. <laughs> I just say I thought you saw your dad. It's really not much different I than when you actually go dad. to the Mall of America. Oh, I thought so. that you and I think I just heard um, my dad. I don't Corin think we saw, saw him. No, your dad. you and I, you and I both saw, heard, and saw your dad. We heard yeah, your dad, you and we saw it. a figure. Okay, yeah. Something that looked like somebody. And I smelled like my grandmother's house. Yes, you're having auditory, hallucinatory, and... Um, smelled like acceptance, because my house doesn't smell like that. What is the... What is well, isn't it uh, olfactory? Olfactory hallucinations, oh, yeah, yes. Uh, olfact, visual, audito, uh, oral, and olfactory... Olfactory hallucinations. Yeah. Smart are smells they? the smells the strongest one tied to memory, so smart on whatever's doing this. Yeah, super smart. Uh that would be me. <laughs> I'm doing this. I'm the storyteller. You're welcome. <laughs> so Turns out it's actually Ryan in game as <laughs> what's as up, an guys? I'm Ryan. I mean to be I'm fair. The to be fair, not a lot has changed in the Twin Cities. I've noticed we got jumped by a knoll. Someone booby trapped their garage. Like I've been, I've driven through neighborhoods that where I would expect that. So. Yeah, a diner. Um, <laughs> a diner is the it, for those of you who aren't from the Twin Cities. A diner is the very rich area. Oh, look at that Twin viewer Cities. count. We just look at that viewer count. We just lost everybody from a diner. No, no. <laughs> Whatever are we going if to do to we recover were... from this horrible loss? That if one we person. would have been in a dino, we would have found a pool. They were fu- they were Ooh, fine up true. until the point where we. It was probably Egan, down. actually. Then. <laughs> so, uh, as you entered the mall, um, unfortunately, you discovered that, in fact, it was also misty and foggy within, also dark. No real sources of light inside, so you're clicking on whatever lanterns, flashlights you have with you, and trying to illuminate the way, but that light is almost making it harder to see the things and shapes that are just out of out of your vision. I need everybody to make a mental test. Difficulty three. Damn it, how are we going to find Villa Pizza? Ah! <laughs> it's right there at the entrance. Oh. Is this a task involving patience, will power, or discipline? It is not. I have what is 16. It? So difficulty three. So 16 is going to get you there. Oh, a nine. That got a you. nine gets you there. Oh. Is that a, a five and a five? Okay. So Quinn, Isaac, <laughs> you two are... Oh, according to chat, Villa Pizza is gone. That's sad. Wait, what? Well, yeah, it's the post-apocalypse. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know what? <laughs> you know what? In this game, it's still there. There's a guy working there. People are still working life. there. <laughs> trying, just really waiting for, for their time off. He's like, handing out free samples. Uh, they got like bad for a him. guy with a fan <laughs> keeping the mist away. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much. Games uh, by makeup. James and GameStop are still open. <laughs> yeah. You can, Take that's magic actually items. where this is going. Take them uh, our magic items. They'll give us 350 Turns out GameStop survived thanks to thanks to the Robin Hood. Uh, what are you, 
but what God, what was that subreddit called the stock the stock thing yeah yeah exactly well, let's really run down gamestop in this uh in this <laughs> game guys wow uh actually that's where all this is going uh you go to games by james and we're going to have your characters from this game play dungeons and dragons oh for the rest of the campaign so that's, meta. that's the end. i can afford the books yeah. now i can afford the books now <laughs> after we after we robbed that armored car in game in game we did we robbed a number yes. anyways yes so yes. as i was saying sure. quinn we and i very <laughs> Uh, <laughs> capable of robbing an armored car in real life, as you can see. I don't know. as a possibility. Uh, Quinn and Isaac, uh, as you're kind of almost reaching out, feeling your way through this, uh, you start to brush up against something. There's a clattering of plastic whenever you do. And your hands brush against cloth. You're pretty sure you're in an old clothing store, but it's hard to tell without any source of discernible light. And then you hear something. Nell, Corin, you're a little further ahead in the group. And as you are walking forward and trying to make sure that you know, there's nothing in here with you, you both at the same time see the silhouette of a person standing stock still 10 feet in front of you you can't make out their features but they are standing there looming over you from a heightened position what do you a do heightened, a heightened position they are higher than you they have the high ground can we I see what they're standing on or does it look like they're floating you can't tell no you draw your blade who's there? I no draw answer my blade and I shout, who's there they do not answer i look over and i go Ask him nicer. I'm pointing my gun at them. Who oh. are you, please? There you go. That's good. Does that work? I'm. I'm. Uh, I just. Okay. Um. No, you're the only one that hears a response. <laughs> Actually, let's do it like this. No. Will you accept a GM intrusion? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, for those of you unfamiliar with the Cypher system, this is one of the ways that the players get experience points. If a player accepts a GM intrusion, uh, they get one experience point, and they get to gift another experience point to a player of their choice, but they have to justify why that player is getting that experience point. So, Clarity, who is getting... The experience point. I want to give it to Quinn for all of those lock boxes she opened up last session. Okay. As we're Thanks. basically rich now. <laughs> so uh, you got an MVP for that, and you got an XP for that this game. So that's carrying over. Some solid money right there. Forgot that. <laughs> now, if only we could transfer that into the real world. <laughs> ah. It, the the age old problem of tabletop role playing games the money yes isn't real <sighs> sigh either the eight hours of uninterrupted sleep you get sigh <laughs> so Nell you hear as plain as day your father's voice come from the figure in the fog and say. What what is the affectionate nickname your father has for you? Oh gosh, um, I have given no thought to that at all. Um, it's just gonna be sweetie if uh, if you can't think of something actually, in the next ten it's seconds. Probably just be sweetie. Right. That make that works. You hear your father's voice very clearly. Your father's voice, although it's kind of raspy gurgling a little bit say sweetie as it starts to lurch towards you uh corin you hear nothing and you see nothing it is still standing stock still no what do you do um i'm going to take a step back and say what why what why what <laughs> i'm gonna start just start, start stuttering in my words 
Um, why are you here? What? I came here with you. What are you? What's happening? Not... <laughs> Quinn, Isaac, you see Nell acting very cagey. Ooh. Like more cagey than usual, or the usual cagey. You all, you all right up there? It's. There's someone standing up here, and I think he's got Nell a little shook. Is it there actually Virgin. someone standing up there? Because I don't see anything. Do you guys? At this point, pro- Quinn, Isaac, you see a silhouette. Oh, you don't okay. see that thing? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was I was behind you. It's a little hard to see in the fog. Okay. Shallow vision. Uh, Isaac pulls out the closer look. Okay. Is the silhouette outlined? Does it have some? Does it give off any kind of aura? So much like using the closer look or the magic detector outside, the entire area is glowing with magical energy. It's difficult to get a good read on it. It's got this sort of white essence to it. Oh, that's nothing but goodness. We're, we're fine. It's almost <laughs> you. You're having a harder time seeing the silhouette in the fog with the closer look than you were without it. Ugh. What do you see? It the whole the whole area is radiating magical energy. What color? White. No. That's way. all. That's that's literally all colors put together. Great. Can I see him? You s- well? kind of shambling towards you, still this black silhouette, not he should be visible by now he's only five feet away, what are you gonna do? Is he getting closer to us? No Okay. I'm going to step forward and try to help him not fall over <laughs> can, I, can I do something really quick? Yeah you know how when you have the two radios and when you hit like the buttons at the same time, they make the loud noise? Yeah. Uh, can I grab one of them and put the other one really close? Because I can tell she's something's happening to her and stuff's happened to us already. So we can already tell like something's happening with her mind. Can I stick one right to her ear and hit both buttons and just see if I can shock her out of it with a loud noise to her ear? Uh, let's find out. Uh, that's actually going to be a mental defense roll uh, from... From clarity. Oh, I was like, I didn't think I'd have to roll for that. No, no, <laughs> it's, it's clarity. That makes, it's only a difficulty uh, one at this point because uh, she hasn't failed any of her uh, previous mental tests for this. So I got a six. Okay. There is a loud squelching sound as you advance to help this ah. shambling form, and you kind of close your eyes, wincing for a second, and when you reopen them. The silhouette is back 10 feet away. You can't hear anything. It's, again, deathly quiet. You can hear your heart beating in your ears. You okay? Uh, yeah, I just... Sorry if that hurt, but I couldn't think of what else to do. No, you're fine. I just... I thought I saw my dad. Well, I have smelled my grandmother's house and thought I saw Isaac's dad so this should be a fun little trip for us yeah I think uh, the, the, the likeliness of our family members actually being here is, is, is probably pretty low so let's um, you know just be a little careful I'm, I would like to in a bit of anger I want to chuck my sword at the uh, at the figure with using the chain weapon feature with using the chain yeah difficulty one speed test oh i see this is where we find out it's grand fisher oh because you have the three levels of i have three levels of uh edge in speed, there we go so. there we go so yes you automatically succeed and now you are now proficient in chain sword yes she's nice. throwing it at the she's throwing it at the form that's kind of floating in the air yeah if this is a grand fisher situation and 
No one here watches Bleach, so no one gets that, but... <laughs> nope. Nope, I'm nobody be... in the entire world gets that reference. Uh, the sword <laughs> no one in this, flies. No one in this Zoom call. <laughs> the sword flies out of Nell's hand as she kind of grips the chain. Point goes into the figure with a crunch. Please don't be... Oh, no, the figure it's actually there. knocks backwards a little bit and then falls forward, breaking into pieces in front of you. A mannequin. Uh, where was it standing? We're in a clothing store. I don't know if you felt oh. the the clothing. Um, so that this is that's a that's a mannequin. I think that's what they called those. Your history Damn. knowledge, oh. you would know. Yeah, mannequins yeah. To, to display stuff. Uh, yeah, it's. I'm, I'm sure there's probably a display up there that it was standing in, on. In fact, yes, there is a wooden box that the mannequin had been posed on. Stupid mannequin. I kick its head. I mean... For a brief second as you do that, you see your father's face just as your foot connects. And it clatters off into the mist. What? Well, nothing. Oh, yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Carry, carry, carry on? So we're on, the, so we're on the first floor. We need light. Mm-hmm. We don't have light. I mean, we all like, we all have our flashlights and, and whatever, it's... but this fog is making it nearly impossible. If we find if we find a light switch, we can try. I don't. I doubt there's power. power? Yeah. Uh, if we find a box or a breaker box or something, if somebody spots one, let me know. I can probably do something. I bet this could make some light. I, I hold out the 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 metal wand. Yeah, let's save that. Yeah, but you've seen what that can do. It doesn't just stay in one place. Save it. Aren't don't you want to use that on yeah, something? So like a like the, I mean, the yeah. something. You something. used it on a room, and that was uneventful. Although you did, <laughs> although you did burn down the house we wanted to stay in. Can you imagine if you used that on something that's trying to kill us? It'd be awesome. What if it's the mall that's trying to kill us? Though I could burn down the mall. Well, let's save it, and if we find out it is the mall that's trying to kill us, I will not object to you using it on the mall. Although we'd have to find, like, a good place for you to use it. I don't think you could burn it down just by, like, hitting one of these concrete walls. Um, we got to find its heart. Maybe there's a giant pile of explosives somewhere, and I can use it on them. Don't tease me. <laughs> As you're having this conversation, the mist Wait. is just kind of hovering around you. I assume it's... we're walking and talking. Are you? Can I mean, I did say carry on. Yeah. and Okay. I say we're going and we're going to be, I, I would think we should be looking for ways into like, we should be looking for rooms into like computer rooms or what the name is, uh, what was the name of the crayfish, store? crayfish, Cray. crayfish computers. I assume it's somewhere here on the first floor. I think they actually said it would, it was first floor. Um, no one ever said that. Oh, no, that's right. But chances are it would probably be on the first floor. Most of the computer places were. So let's look for crayfish. Okay. So you're continuing your way through the fog as you're having this conversation, and Good it time. is oppressive. It, it sticks to you. It's this high humidity. You can kind of feel like you're almost swimming through the air as you walk. Uh, Nell, you feel great. This is like being submersed in water. It's much better than the uh, attempt you made the other day and smells a lot less bad. So <sighs> You uh, aren't... If it weren't for the mind warping, this place would be great. <laughs> Uh, you're not really sure how long you've been walking at this point. It seems like you've been going for quite some time. I need everybody to make a mental test. My notes. 19. 19? Is that a, a 7 or 6? Six? 6. six. six. I have a you. 6 as well. I have 11. Okay. 
No. Once again, you hear far off in the distance your father calling out your name. Clearer now. As if... As if he was somewhere out there in the mists, just shouting for you. Lost. Nelly! Ah, oh, jeez, Nelly, where are you? It's just the mist. It's just the mist. It's just the mist. Uh, I would like... Uh, well, actually, not just yet. Um, oh, goody. <laughs> You... Which out? We gave the good alcohol to the goblin, right? We gave the good alcohol to him, I, I believe, in a trade. I no, I believe you used the good alcohol to make a bomb to blow something up. Oh, we, that's right. I smashed it on the nose face. Oh, that's right. That's right. So we still you have the bad alcohol. Up. You do. Yep. Now you should to. take a drink. It might help you. I don't. We're not playing by Shadows of Brimstone rules here. Whiskey doesn't heal your sanity damage. <laughs> I'd rather not. Whiskey Mike. can... Alcohol can harden you to some mental stuff, all right? I'm not speaking from experience, no. Eventually, <laughs> you come to an area that's starting to lighten a little bit. It's almost like there's some sort of large overhead light source... The fog isn't really dispersing very much, but you continue walking. Who's leading the way? I would assume Corin would probably be up yeah. front. Cool. Corin followed probably side by side with Nelly. Yeah. But Nelly would be following Corin's lead because she has no idea where anything is. Oh, good, because he does. <laughs> so, Corin, as you yep. walk forward... This brightening area, the fog is starting to lighten a little bit, but then you kind of run into something that's about waist high. It's a railing of some sort. It seems to go perpendicular to the direction you're walking. And as the fog starts to thin a little bit out in front of you, you can see this massive open space with these dark twisting metal objects rising out you've been to the county fair before and they had a roller coaster there but what you see rising out in sort of a looped fashion before disappearing back in a different direction is much much bigger and more fierce than anything you've ever actually ridden on the thing is you appear to be at an elevated position from it. Maybe it's sunken down into the middle of the mall, but that seems odd too. The rest of you also walk up to this barrier that Corin has stopped at. You see the shadowy figures of an amusement park laid out before you. Should we, should we try to ride that before we leave? No. Uh, do no. You, Probably uh, not. What, what, you, what, what odds are those even working? Zero. What are the odds? Zero? I mean, it's magical. The odds of them working? 50 50. The odds of us surviving them in the state that they're in? Zero. No, they, maybe. It's, I mean, they're, Never they're, know they're, until you try. I think there's still like a, like at least a 20% chance. You two are welcome to give it a go. <laughs> well, we've got other priorities at this moment. How responsible! How responsible of you. Hmm. So we're at the entrance, or we're at an entrance to an amu to the amusement park. You're on a platform overlooking the amusement park. Hmm. This is weird because we're on the first floor, so. Maybe we're not on the first floor. Can I look at the ground? Can I look at the ground like around and get a sense if like if we're on the second floor or if this is definitely like they have sank and broken into the ground over time? As you look over the rail, you see that there is another landing, mm -hmm. and then you can't see beyond that one. You all hear a sound as the fog begins to pull back in a little bit from the amusement park 
just obscuring that roller coaster track ever so slightly, the sound of beating wings. Large, leathery wings beating in the mists. Corn, Isaac, you see a form begin to take shape as a creature perches on top of the roller coaster track about 40 Ooh. feet away. What's it look like? It's difficult to tell. It's all shadow, but you see massive wings spread out from its body and curl around, and you see two glowing red eyes staring at your group. So it has seen... Cool. Hey, is there a is there a store nearby? N- not that you can see. No? Not an opening or anything? The fog is starting to thicken again. Okay, well, I know how malls... Uh, essentially are supposed to be laid out so I just go, hey, we should get into a store very quickly right now. So and, easy to bring them here. And move towards one. Move towards one. So move towards the sides or some uh, the mm-hmm. sides and find a store. Following the railing a little bit, you start to move uh, to your right or left? The direction that we weren't coming from, yeah. I yeah. assume? Yeah. Forward. You came straight into this, so the direction you didn't oh. come from is over the railing. Probably to the ru- to the right. To the right. right? All right. Yeah. So you head along the rail to the right. The mist beginning to obscure everything. You can't even see the figure now; just the glowing red eyes. Quinn, Nell, you don't see this. And then you hear the beating wings again, just as you get to the entrance to a glassed storefront. The door is open. It is also full of mist. Something passes over your heads, a shadowy form, and then it's gone. And all is quiet again as you enter the store. Anybody else see the shadow, hear the beating wings, see the figure perched? Any of those things? Isaac? Nell? Did did we hear it, or did we just not see it? You heard it. Quinn, Nell, you heard the thing. You heard something pass overhead, but you didn't see anything. I heard something. Large wings. Yes, yes. It there's so there's something that knows we're here, and it has very, very large wings. It is also a large creature. You you saw it? Yes. Where? Out in the mist, perched on top of the one of the roller coasters. Quinn, you were looking that direction. You didn't see anything. I. I mean, I heard something, but I didn't see anything like that. That I feel like I would have seen it too. I mean, I'm not. My eyes aren't that bad. No, but there is mist everywhere. So, so how were you able to see it, and I was, and we weren't. Me and Nellie weren't able to see it. Well, we weren't looking for it. Oh. None of us were looking for it could just be that my eyes passed over it and I got lucky. Maybe it's another hallucination. Possibly. Possibly. Although it's weird that we actually saw it and you also heard it, though, the same way we did. So. Well, I'd say just uh, continue forward and kind of watch our backs. Let's be careful and keep our eyes now not only on a swivel but also looking up. Yes. Sounds good. We also need to find out what floor we're on. This should be the first floor, but there were landings below us, and I don't know if that means the thing fell through or what. We need to find some indication of what floor we're on, which... We need to find yeah. one of those... Oh, now it's just I... enjoying mm. breathing in the mist and how nice it is. <laughs> Would a place as big as this have some form of map that tells you where you are? I would assume at some place or even something stamped on one of the walls or one of the central pillars telling you what floor it is. So I guess we can, we're not that far from the entrance. I guess we can look around. We'll have to look really carefully, but take Mm -hmm. some time to look around in this fog in the immediate area, see if we can find either a map or any indication of what floor we're on or even stairs up or down. I'll keep an eye out. All right, everybody watch each other's backs, but let's look around. 
what store what kind of store are we in as you kind of look it's around not does not smell like coffee sadly no uh mm. it's surprisingly tidy there doesn't seem to be a lot left on the shelves here but what is left on the shelf are accordions some guitars it's a music store Ooh, no good. no we don't need i'm to gonna make... find a drum set no we don't need to make to carry any more noise there's something stalking us now as you rush out of their view looking for a drum set you're not able to find one Dang it. surprise roll me, everybody roll me a d4 everybody no mm -hmm. Wait, no, not that one. That's the one that rolled bad. A D4? Yep. One. Two. Oh, my God. Three. Four. Hey! hey! <laughs> All right. That can only mean good things. That We win. We win the game. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a full, it's a straight. <laughs> Get an XP or something. Nailed it. For sheer dumb luck. Some games you do. Uh, so I'm, now you don't find a drum set. I've survived on less. Um, do I find any sort of percussive instrument? You find some drumsticks. Yeah, I'll take them. Okay. Put them in your back pocket. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Be cool. So, yes, you found a music store. You know, those might Is... come in handy. Their ukulele. Looking around, you find one ukulele. Does it work? Do you try it? Yeah. Just a, just a one little bling. It's going to be so out of tune. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> the discordant note hangs in the air. It seems to actually kind of cut through the fog a little bit. Is there a computer? Looking around, you find the sales counter, and yeah, there's a desktop computer with a cash drawer. Let's put some skills I haven't been able to use lately to use before we go out there. Hang on, just one second. Uh... I'm going to start drumming on stuff. I, I saw that coming. I'm going to keep the ukulele, though. Okay. I'll just, like, strap it to the side of my bag. Like, tie it on. All right. You've strapped a ukulele to the side of your bag. Now you begin to drum on different surfaces as Corrin investigates the computer. What's I... Isaac doing? Go ahead, Isaac, Isaac is probably just seeing if there's anything that really he could tinker with. Most of the musical instruments seem to just be standard. I would like to use my machine efficiency skill mm -hmm. uh, to get this computer uh, up and running at some level that would allow me to find out, like, maybe what floor we're on or anything like that. The only limitation here is the fact that as you try to turn it on, there is no power. I would like to use my abilities to see if I can... Uh, rig it in some way uh, with some of the computer parts I had. Possibly the phone or something or something with the box. Maybe the electric box inside the store. Okay. You go, you look at the breakers and stuff in back and you're not seeing anything. It's not like the power was blown or something. You just got to reset a fuse. It's just there's no power. There's no generation power generation coming to this facility yeah you could take some time and try to jerry rig something to function as a power supply but it would take a little bit of time isaac uh, you find would something a magical battery happen to provide a power you know a power source by itself the battery would work for this. That. I forgot we had that. You could uh, try I, to get that to fit. Isaac uh, 
heads over to Corin and uh, probably overhears him mumbling something about oh, pow no, no power uh, and then reaches into his stuff and pulls out the D and pulls out the D battery and says, Hey, Corin, mm. I think you could use this more than I could right now. I think that might be what you need. I only need to get this computer on and I can do the rest. So, uh, set it on it. If you don't mind. Set, set yep. the battery on top of the tower or within put it, yeah, hold it yeah. within range because yeah. we don't actually have to touch it. We just have to get close. So like hold it within range and I'll keep messing with the computer, seeing if I can get it to turn on. Well, I place it down within the range of the computer, probably on the, like the counter or something. Yeah. Okay. Put it on and the computer it, and it blows up. And then I uh, return back to what I was doing before. Okay. Uh, Clarity, do you have a question? I want to go jam out with Quinn with her ukulele. Okay. <laughs> She'll attempt to tune it as well. She'll try and like find something that sounds good she's never played a musical instrument before in her life but she's just trying to find it it's like a sound give me a, a mental test we're gonna call it difficulty since you've never done this before difficulty five am i able to help in any way <laughs> bring it down to I'm a four. Only right. uh, uh it's it just says that that I have a skill as a creative that requires me to always be learning. You are trained in tasks that involves learning something new, such as like uh, collecting knowledge or reading data big, et cetera. I don't know. If... I wouldn't count I'm this good as at learning. researching new things. This is mostly a performance test. Okay. <laughs> if you wanted to take time to learn how to play this, well, she's just trying to find the right, like, something right. that sounds good. Like, she's trying to f feel out no, what No, I, I got gotcha. you. It's just going to be a sounds. performance test at this point. So we're down okay. to a four. Twelve or better. Okay. No, that's eight. So uh, you strum, you try to tune it in, and you're not really having much success. The uh, discordant notes combined with Nellie's constant uh, drumming is a little distracting to both of you, Corin <laughs> and Isaac. Wang. Uh, Isaac, in the back, you found <laughs> a piano. And as you get close to it, you hear shuffling, and then the piano begins to play music. You I all, all hear yeah. it, actually. I start jamming out to it. The piano's playing music? Yep. Isaac's over by uh, it. Maybe Isaac's playing the piano. Oh, so are you, who's... Is someone playing that beautiful music? Is it three, good? Can all three yeah, of you... Go Isaac. Can all three of you, for just a couple of minutes, not be so noisy <laughs> while I try and find out where we're supposed to go in this death trap. I mean, it sounds c nice. You're right. The piano can keep playing. Can you two stop? Yeah. Thank you. Isaac, hey, I didn't bro. know you could play piano. I'm not. That's not what I wanted to hear you say. <laughs> 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 Who's playing the piano? Isaac uh, pulls out the pocket watch and sees if there's some if he can make out anything through the through the fog it's very it's i mean the piano's visible as you look over it there seems to be a drum of some sort rotating in the top of the machine and you kind of rack your brain for a second you realize it's a player piano but why did it just start all of a oh. sudden i'm going to keep working on the computer <laughs> so as the d cell was set down it begins to glow slightly and the power on the computer turns on. It takes a little bit for it to boot up because it is very dusty and the monitor is covered in a layer of dust, but you're able to kind of wipe that away. But as it loads so up the, the desktop program, uh, a black box appears in the middle of it with two yellow squares that kind of 
flash on and off a couple times before disappearing and words appear. Who are you? I have to move closer to Corin. Is not there really a know. like? Is there a prompt where I can type type out something? It. You're not entirely sure. Uh, it, it looks like you maybe can type back. I type something, but I don't hit enter. I just want to see if words come up on the screen when I type. Nothing's coming up. Nell is right next me? to you drumming. Can you hear me when I speak? I say that into the computer monitor. Yeah, I can hear you. Not you, the computer. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, that makes it easy. Uh, it's customary to introduce yourself first. There's no response. Are you the mall? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, we're from out of town and are looking for something in here. What are you doing here? Hiding. How are you accessing this computer? What are you hiding from? Oh, wait, I'm not reading it. I'm drumming. <laughs> there is no response. Do you know where we are? There is a long pause and an address pops up of a music store on the third floor on the east side of the mall. How are we on the third floor? Do you know where you are? You need to be quieter. You will wake it up. Oh, believe me, I wish they could. Hey, stop hmm? playing music. The thing inside the computer has instructed me to tell you to do so. Inside the computer? Yes. As That's your don't attention... Don't even look at me like, That's the weirdest thing you've heard today. <laughs> <laughs> the piano stops playing. And Corin, as you look back at the screen, that black box is no longer there. Hello? Are you hallucinating again? None of you um, saw this. Maybe. Uh, but anyways, right now, I'm going to do what I came over here to do. Um, so I know I this computer is probably just like for whatever the store was for like the time that I have it on. So I would like to use Tinker, which you know allows me to do something different than its original purpose. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to use Tinker to see if I can access um, access some of the internal uh, data and find out where Crayfish uh, Computers is. Unfortunately, there's no internet connection, so that makes it a little trickier. I would like to use, then I would like to use my machine interface, which actually can have me, uh, one of the things is actually, uh, uh, mess with a, a network connection is actually one of the things I can kind of mess with. Okay. So you kind oh, of extend your hand, touching your fingertips to this dusty screen. You all see... Well, those of you observing, Corin's eyes sort of roll back in his head as he sort of interfaces I, with the computer. I don't it's... think this... This isn't magic, I don't think. What's the description of the thing? It's, uh, you can just... You can make a blaster shoot further, coax more speed from a sky cycle, and flew with the clarity of the camera. Jury rig, uh, light to be brighter, um... Um, boot up and uh, boot up a network connection and so on you increase an object's level by two for one minute or you treat the object as an asset that reduces an associated task's difficulty by two steps for one minute okay choice. <clears throat> well in that case we will say after about five minutes of tinkering on the computer uh you are able to establish a connection to an intranet okay it has a password I'm, I'm using... but... Go ahead. I'm using the back of Corin's head to drum. 
fucked up. Corin, you can do anything about that? Can one of you actually stop her since I'm trying to do something important? <laughs> uh, we, uh, we, we should probably, you know. <laughs> I, I will make my way to that piano. Okay. So I've got an intranet connection. Intranet. Yeah, intranet. You're able yep. to bypass the password. Doesn't seem like there's much. There's like a email system that was probably used to communicate from store to store. There's uh, security alerts. There is a directory. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, there is more. If I had more time, I'm sure I could dig, but I don't feel like we have a lot of time. So. So. You access directory crayfish computing is on the third floor north end did the address that we got sent tell us what end we're on what end did we come in to because we knew that you came in from the northeast on the first okay. level you ended up on a uh, in a store on the third floor of the east side yep and we're pretty sure we didn't go up anything so nope. nice flat walk the entire way but it says Crayfish Computers is on the third floor? Yep. Okay. Uh, Isaac, is there anything else I sh could, should grab from this computer while I have it up? I don't know uh, if I'll be able to, but I know what Crayfish Computers, I found the location. Are uh, we close? Should be on the third floor, which is what we're on. Although I don't know how we got to the third floor, but we'll worry about that problem when we have to, I guess. Uh, nothing I can think of. Meanwhile, right. Isaac was uh, preoccupied with this player piano, like checking out the mechanics of it, looking at the feeder and whatnot, seeing if there was like any power source needed. Can I, while well, I still have time, can I see if it can tell me where like the main power or main network connections would be in the mall? You get uh direction of IT is in the basement. Okay. I'm just going to make All right. Uh, when Nell gets over to the player piano, what does she do? Um, she's just kind of tapping on the, the piano itself. She's annoying uh, Isaac now. <laughs> Or trying to annoy Isaac. No. <laughs> Isaac has takes no, like has no uh, reaction from Nell. In fact, he's probably like, taking a look to see if Nell's playing affects what he's looking at in any way. Uh, it does not. No. Uh, I would like everybody to make a mental test, please. Oh boy, it's a one. Yay. I got a, I got a 10. I got an eight. I got a 16, but I don't feel like it matters anymore after that one. So GM intrusion time. GM intrusion time. And unfortunately, no XP because it was off of one. Yep. Isaac, uh, you're kind of digging around inside the computer and I'm at the player piano sorry the player piano and uh, you hear something kind of snap and something sharp go across the back of your hand and as you pull your hand out there's a large red cut across the back of your hand maybe one of the strings snapped but there shouldn't be are there strings in a player piano? You you weren't seeing any. What's going on here? And then you hear footsteps. You note that Nell's drumming has stopped. You don't hear the whine of that ancient computer fighting the three pounds of dust inside of the case as it tries to perform what Corrin wants it to do. Should have blew that out first. 
you see the door to the store open. Except it's not the store anymore. You're not by the player piano. You're you're in your garage, your workshop. You're crouched down behind one of the benches as these figures in black leather trench coats and these weird flared out helmets and gas masks of some sort are carrying devices that look very much like your magic detector as they tick around moving through the fog not fog smoke something's burning you're where is your family where is everybody where where'd your friends it doesn't matter you're here and you have to hide as they start to zero in on your position the rest of you see isaac fall against the glass and slide down it until he is a crumpled heap on the floor Isaac, I'm, I'm gonna first. I'm gonna grab the battery and run over to him. I'm since I'm right next to him, I'm gonna try to I drop the drumsticks and try to shake him awake. His eyes have rolled back in his head and they are just white. Isaac Isaac uh, Isaac Quinn, use your dream magic to wake him. Uh well Yeah, do you have is he, any is do you have he any magic? asleep? Let's I mean he's un- I mean he's unconscious. Um I have uh, the uh I can steal a previous dream from a creature but the, the, the that's not going to help here. I've specialized in repairing. Can I repair a human? Mm, no. <laughs> mm. I, called, I mean I've called, got That's called medicine. Yeah. <laughs> For medicine, I I don't think I have really anything. I I have like the the thing I got from my mom that's like for for patching people up. Not, Sadly, not when you to... leveled up, you didn't take a, a specialization in neurology. So no. Can I slap him? That's what we should. Absolutely. I have that peppermint oils that I made for the asthma for um. For Nelly, can I wave that underneath his nose to see if that'll work? Because it's very strong smell. Mm-hmm. Can I slap him first? I ask first. I mean, if you want to. All right. I'm just like at the ready with the bottle. <laughs> I just want to see if I can smack him out of it. So I just give him a slap. Okay. How hard? Not like enough to try and wake him up. Like I'm not trying to like bloody him up or anything. Okay. He's trying to abuse him. Isaac, they found you. They're going to kill you. Know that if you don't get away, they are going to destroy you and everything that you've ever worked for. They're already using your machines. You built those for them, those magic detectors, and now they've used them across Newcastle, across the Duluth Union, to track down every magic user and burn them. Isaac is probably just completely frozen, not struggling to figure out what to do. He's just in a complete state of shock. One of them reaches down and grabs you by your shirt and hauls you up as another lands a blow with a metal (laughs) glove across your face. Give me a mental defense test. We're going to set the difficulty at three. Nat 20. (laughs) There is a flash of light as you come to consciousness. Corrin's hand slapping you across the face. Your eyes roll back into position as you are shaking. Corrin, you did it. You woke him up. I'm two for two right now. Sadly, it's been inflicting pain on my allies, but it's working. Isaac, Isaac what okay? happened? Isaac is still, like, trying to get his head straight after... after Here, have some of this. I give him the whiskey. He just completely... He takes a shot back and then... 
immediately regrets it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called regret. The whiskey. Whatever this thing is, it knows exactly my biggest, my worst nightmare. Well, you were out of it for, how long was he out of it? 30 seconds. Well, you were out of it for a good 30 seconds or so. Isaac, it felt like minutes. Yeah, you, you, you start, start a bus? Um, I'm, I'm glad that the, 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 the smack worked, I guess. It seemed a little unnecessary, but, you know, he really it wanted to It worked. I, it worked. Yeah. But Violence is always the If this happens to me... Slap you? One, one of you. Okay. Not I'll each of you. I volunteer. I volunteer. <laughs> Nelly will slap you. Okay. That's fine. Do you know the difference between a slap trying to wake somebody up and a slap trying to hurt somebody, though? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't think she does. I don't believe you, but if it wakes me up, I guess. <laughs> one uses a hand, the other uses a knife. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Did you cut your hand to falling down? I think I cut my hand on the piano somehow. Oh no. Can I examine the piano without putting my hand in it? What are you trying to examine it for? See if there's something dangerous in there, I guess. You find a loose piano cable. Probably snapped. It's haunted. I mean, that tracks. The ghost in here tried to cut you. Or this piano cord snapped and cut you. Uh, which makes more sense. Although, well, not more sense. Makes sense. The other one makes just as much sense in this place. <laughs> All right. Well... We're on the third floor. Also, here's the battery back. I hand him the battery. That helped, actually. I know where IT is, if we need power or another or a network connection. And I know where Crayfish Computers is. We it's should, here on the third floor. We should get what we need from here. And if need be, we can probably take whatever we're looking for down to the third, down to the, down to wherever IT is. Well, if we can just get to Crayfish Computers, that's where the hard drive and everything, that's where the project is supposed to be. My biggest thing is, I don't know how we got on the third floor, so I don't know if it's going to be super easy to get to the place, even though we're technically on the third floor. Do you, do you think there's a chance that um, we could somehow find ourselves on another floor randomly? Instead of the one that, like that, Quite there's possibly. some some sort of something working I mean, against us. I mean, there's magic all around us. It's tapping into our fears. Quite possibly, it talked to me on the computer, although it was warning mm -hmm. me and telling me that we needed to be quiet and hide. So maybe there are multiple ghosts. Oh. Either way, you guys ready to? Get out there and look. Let's be careful. Let me cover my drumsticks first. Let's be careful. There's also apparently a giant bird thing. Wow. Well, it's just made wing like noise. Is it might not be a bird. Could also be a bat. Maybe it's just a could pair also, of wings. Could also be a dragon. Could it also could be, be a could also be a manticore. Yeah. That's it hasn't tried to kill us yet. Did it sound like a manticore? I mean, it flew over us when we came before. in here. We don't know if that was it trying to kill us. I feel like it might have been. I think it. I think it's a preserving. From our past experience, did it sound like a manticore? No. No. Again, manticores had a lot more roaring and growling and spitting fire in your experience. Well, that's and then gurgling the sound. Death. It Did didn't wings... fly very much when it attacked. The, it landed and started to kill people or try to. It's the octopus hippo that I have made an enemy of. It's grown wings. It's it's <laughs> next. Makes sense. It, it digivolved. The octopotamus? Yes. It digivolved to the octopotamus <laughs> dactyl. <laughs> it's next Write it down. Be a Write it handsome. down, Ryan. Right, man. Man. Mm -hmm. Write it down. I believe you mean the patak. 
Pterodactopotamus? Pterodac I mean, mine was, I mean, mine was simpler. Pterodactopotamus. Guys, when naming Damn. stuff, you gotta go simple. You gotta go simple. Not if it's a dinosaur. We remember all the simple dinosaur names. Do we? We do. Do we? Name a complicated one. I'm a Stegosaurus. Ah, uh, but is, <laughs> it, is that the correct name for the creature? Called Spiky Back. Yeah. See, thank you. Okay, yeah, 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 so yeah. back on track here. <laughs> Getting a little distracted. We should make our own meme of that person that names all the weird looking D&D &D characters, but names them what he thinks they should be named. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. So, so you... uh, off to crayfish. Get, getting ready to head out and go to crayfish, which just sounds like a restaurant. But... As you carefully open the door into the corridor of the mall, the mist is still there, thick as ever. You can only see five, maybe ten feet in front of you. Where do you go? I guess keep going in the direction we were going, which we, we went to the right and found this place, so I guess just keep following that. Okay. So you continue heading Looking towards at the all north. the store names. It's a odd collection of store names. Uh, lots of puns. Oh, goody. Some, some simple stuff. But continue walking for some time. The mall never turns. Roll me a d4. Everybody? Just one person. Looks like John's got it. Okay. Two. Two? Okay. You find yourselves at another rail. You're not entirely sure where that came from you were following the wall you had a hand on the wall and suddenly it wasn't there god damn it look out across the rail as the mist begins to fade back slightly there's something there again something tangible maybe you're all seeing it it's it looks like a giant cat with long teeth. Is it moving? Everybody make a mental test. Key. 18. Okay. 17. Okay. 7. Okay. 4. Coin's turn. Isaac um, and Nell, not Quinn. The eyes on this creature are glowing yellow. You hear a long growl. And then you hear tongue thud as Corin passes out. Great. Did I walk into something? Nope. Nope. Corin, you were standing there looking at the creature, and as you turn... The mists have gotten even more omnipresent around you. You look and you can't see Isaac, you can't see anybody near screams. You hear Quinn screaming nearby. You rush towards it. That sound. You see a giant figure, 12 feet tall, raise a hand that is now dripping as you run straight into Quinn's body blood pooling out from her the creature isn't there you hear more screaming as you continue to run it's isaac this time you get there just in time to see isaac fly by you well part of him fly by you quickly followed by the other part you can see the creature up ahead again you continue to chase it you don't have any weapons on you, but you have to stop it. You have to stop it from hurting your friends. This frantic energy starts to set in. 
Nell, Quinn, Isaac, there's a growling creature about 12 feet ahead of you, and your friend just passed out. What do you want to do? Uh, well, did... I volunteered to smack him, yeah. so I'm going to give him a mighty smack. Uh, Isaac probably just pulls out the, like, mighty is a bit much. But pulls out the pike <laughs> and just holds it in front, just in case. Does he extend it? Yeah. And does the shield and... Spy and you get into position. He goes, exactly. he goes, he goes Spartan. Yep. Okay. Or as best I can with my tiny ass wooden shield. Yeah, I'll, I'll it's look. a bit of a juxtaposition. He goes stay, Spartan child in training. I'll stay close to Corin just in case the smack doesn't work so I can do the peppermints. Okay. So now you lean down and you just lay one across his face. Okay. Corin, Quinn, Isaac, Nell, they're all dead. Your grandma, why was she here? Of course she's here. Why wouldn't she be here? She's dead now, too. Your father, you, you, you hear your mother screaming up ahead, and then something collides with you. Make a mental defense roll, please. Difficulty is three. I'm shouting wake up, by the way. <laughs> That's a six. Ooh. Ah. You take one point of might damage as you continue to run towards your mother. She's beefy. Uh, let me know if I can try something, but go on. What do you want to try? Well, so Isaac was down for about 30 seconds, right? And he wasn't moving, like, at all. Mm -hmm. I have a, like, old, worn pocket knife that I, that I keep on me. Just something I got from when we created characters. Knife, worn. I would like to, knowing that mental stuff is happening, I would like to stop and try and concentrate and then pull that knife out and just stab myself in the palm of the hand. So what, sorry, what was your last roll? Uh, six. Six. That is enough that you have an inkling that something's not right here. Okay. You quickly take that knife out. You stab it through the back of your hand. And while you feel this cold rush of energy from that spot, this tightening and unloosing of muscles and tendons, there's no blood. And there's no pain. You are pretty sure you're dreaming. Okay. Qu Quinn's gonna try the peppermint after the snip the slap doesn't work. It doesn't. And go ahead and give me another mm -hmm. uh, mental defense. Uh, this time it's only a two difficulty. Oh, now I get a, now I get a sixteen. <laughs> Woohoo! The I'm scent. my hand back to smack again. <laughs> um, Quinn, you kneel down. You take the oils and you kind of hold it under his nose, as. Uh, Corin, you smell something in the fog, this rich, candied scent, minty and fresh as your eyes roll back to normal. You take a deep breath, grasping your hand that you stabbed, which has a dull ache in it as you wake up. Moments before, Nell is about to slap you again. And I instinctually like throw my hand up because I knew she had volunteered to do yep. this. Okay. You block the blow. <laughs> Oh, Isaac, I, I said once. Into you. I said once. <laughs> you didn't wake up to the first one. We don't try it again, then. As you two argue, Isaac is standing <laughs> over the group in a defensive posture, holding the pike <laughs> towards this large cat that is currently pacing back and forth about 12 feet away on another ledge, oh, locking its cat. yellow eyes on you, Isaac. Do we all see the cat now? Yeah. Yes, Wait. you can all see the cat. Though, Quinn, it is not moving. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it is not moving, but it is snarling and growling. Corin and Isaac, you can see it pacing back and forth. I just dab it. I get ready to throw my... What do you, Isaac? What do you see? I, I see 
something with long teeth, looks like a cat, yellow eyes, and it's pacing back and forth. Same for me. Now, what do you see? It's snarling at us, but it's not pacing. Quinn, what do you see? A, a, a cat. A large cat. That's it. Thank you. Lead with large cat next time. I thought maybe you saw a house cat, and I was like, what? At that moment, <laughs> uh, all of your realities sort of sync up, and there's still a large cat there, but no glowing eyes, no snarling, no movement at all. It's just stationary on a platform about 12 feet out from your balcony position. Huh. So I am like liking that. this place less and less. This place sucks. It's just a cat statue? Looks like it. Maybe can we I... could just start narrating everything we see. Can I? I mean, sure. Possibly. Can I look over the railing and see what floor it looks like we might be on? You look over. There is a floor about 14 feet down. You can just barely see it. Some mm -hmm. sort of yellow structure. And you look up. There's a platform above you as well. Was there a platform above us last time we looked? There was not. Hey guys, we're on the second floor now. Or oh, no. at least a different floor. Well, there was only floors below us last time when we were on the third floor, and now there's a floor above us and below us now. Oh. Now is narrating everything she sees. Fog. Fog. More <laughs> I was fog. about to say. I still all see right, fog. All, all right, we all see fog. We don't got to talk about that. If you do, hey, if you don't see fog, say then something. Say something. Okay, that uh, makes sense. That tracks. If you see something dangerous, though, like yes, definitely say something. Guys, we got to get back up to the third floor. Isaac okay. uh, peers over the edge and looks up and postulates. You think we could? Do you think we could get a rope up there? How? Up? I thought we were going down. We need to we're go to the going third, to the third floor. We need to go floor. to the third floor. That's where Crayfish oh. Computers is. I mean... Uh, I have a rope. I could toss it up maybe, but it's an awkward angle. Well, how's and it going to catch? It's also not going to catch on anything. No, I don't... Do you have a hook shot? I have... I don't... I don't have anything like that. I have a crowbar. That's I mean, work. we got rope. He's got a crowbar. We got stuff. Like, I could make something. I just don't know what. I'm sure if we keep walking, we'll wind up there eventually. Like, let it transport us again? Yeah, we can't keep letting it transport us randomly across the mall can and I... mess with our heads. Can I... I feel like it'll do that anyway. Can I pull Even out... I want to pull out the binoculars. Can I look through them and try all the settings? Just see what it looks like. The Interestingly enough, the uh, infrared doesn't show much except outlines through the fog. You can actually kind of see stuff. A little bit. It's fuzzy. It's flickering every once in a while. And if you take a step to your right, it seems to deactivate again. They weren't working outside. They're, and they're working barely working in, inside. And they're intermittently working. Mm -hmm. Like when I walk, like when I walk, it like goes off and on or something. Yeah. Uh, night vision do anything? No, it's too bright. There does seem to be a glowing thing positioned kind of to your right and above you. The right and above me, how far? The ceiling, you presume. Into it's hard right. to tell. How much noise have we been making since we've been here? Like, we ain't been quiet. Like, we've been pretty noisy, right? Well, she did just yell to tell you to wake up. But I mean, yeah, with the, yeah, the music, it's like, we ain't been quiet, right? No. We now haven't. Definitely not. Yeah. It hasn't been, it's been loud immediately, but the fog seems to have a deadening property to sound. That's convenient. I want to pull out my rifle and shoot the glowing thing that you just told me about. 
to my right, okay. up and to my right. So you take your rifle quickly, point it. I up. would like, I would like to really quick like use the infrared to just see if I like look up at it just really quick to see if it comes on and gives me like a, I don't know, just a little bit better idea of where something's at. Hard to say. It's large squares of light. All right. I'll just shoot it. I'll shoot at what you said. Like, it looks like there's a bright light up and to the right. I'll shoot okay. into that. Just one. Is it the ring it thing? Well, if it is, it's about to get shot. You pull the trigger, and a loud report of the shot echoes out. You're not entirely sure for how far, but it is loud. And for the most part, your group was unprepared for that. There's a few seconds before you hear the shattering of glass and it falling, crashing on things as it does. And a few seconds later, everything around you, including your very being, begins to tremble and shake as this loud growl sounds and echoes across the fog, rippling through you as if you were standing in front of a six foot tall subwoofer cranked to its maximum volume. Well, that's not what I thought was going to happen. I say, uh, what did you think was going to happen I, when you I shot say, your weapon? I say out loud. I thought if I could, I thought maybe the bright, shiny lights uh, were had something to do with the fog, so I was going to shoot one of them out. You all take a point of mental damage. No. You didn't think that the to 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 maybe ask first. Hey, sure I wouldn't. hey unless you're gonna st- hey, unless you're gonna start criticizing everybody on this team for making decisions, you don't get to criticize me for making decisions. I mean, I yeah, make all the decisions. I'm pretty critical of other people, aren't I? I'm always the one who has to criticize Nell. What? <laughs> Are, am I wrong? Are you? I mean, you yell at me. You yell at me for doing perfectly okay things. Yeah? Is that what I do? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that large cat hasn't moved. Hasn't? Hasn't. I don't think that cat's real. I think, I think that's probably true. Makes me wonder about the bird. It's thinking probably not bird, real. Thinking the bird, probably not real. Possibly. I checked my. <laughs> Are we still trembling, or did that just like? No, it was happen? a brief moment. Felt long. All right. Well, but where it was are we next? Well, that pisses off whatever's here in the mall. That pisses off the mall. It does seem like it's the mall itself. You think it's the like, like the the building? I don't or think something it's the within building, the building, but I think I think there's some there must be something living here now that has I don't know its essence is whatever this fog is or something. Well, yeah, um, continue Let's forward, go. upwards. Oh. Uh, well, do we want to try? We? Do we want to try and do the rope thing, or do we want to try and keep walking? Let's get a consensus here. We've tried walking a couple times now, and we know that it's just going to keep moving us around the mall. We don't even know if we're on the same side of the mall that we were last time. Is crayfish computers anywhere near us right now? Not that you can see. I just realized that we didn't look around or anything. That would have been great. Yeah, not that you can see. Okay. I think- how do we know if we climb it it's not just gonna teleport us again like I mean, we, we don't d- even know how the teleporting works at this well, point if we climb up and we teleport we'll know it teleports us either way but we don't know that it won't we that it will or it won't so i'd rather try the one where we don't know if it will i mean that's gonna be quite dangerous if we fall we fall three stories Maybe. two at least yeah I wish there was a way to dispense this fog because that's what's messing with us 
Now, don't you you can can you control or you just create water? I I can create water. But you can't like control it or anything. Uh, no, not not really. Isaac begins uh, to think about something. I, I can try. Hey, Quinn. Can you play something on the... Do you stuff that ukulele that you found yeah. in the instrument store? Play. Can you play something? Doesn't matter what. Just play it as loud as you can. Um, sure? She'll just kind of hesitantly strum some loud out of tune notes. Play some Spongebob. Yeah. <laughs> they seem to echo off the surfaces nearby, cutting through the fog. Like, can we physically see the fog move? Or? No. Okay, never mind then. The sound just doesn't sound muffled. Yes. Well, at least that clears that up. I don't know. I thought something about the noise would affect the fog. Man. I think it has to be pretty loud. Oh. In that case, can I get a good uh, uh, visual enough on the uh, the cat? Mm -hmm. For what? To get a like, if I can get a good eye on its tooth, just a part of the cat. You're pretty sure. And and uh, Isaac wants to shatter. Okay. So you might want to stand back a bit, guys. Focus on the very tip of the creature's tooth. You're not sure if it'll work. It's a larger object. You, if it's connected, if it's actually a cat... It, it's not moving though. What's going on? Maybe it's stone. You focus in on it and collapse the molecules in and then release them. There's a loud popping sound and the sound of debris as the entire head of the creature pops apart. An explosion of tiny pieces showering everywhere, including pelting each of you with tiny orange bricks. The heck? Picking one up, you see that they are uh, microbes, uh, modular interlocking plastic construction blocks, which are not copywritten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. We have some of these. I feel the like village. we've heard of these yeah. before. You, you were all kids when the change happened, It's or the yeah. fall happened, so yeah. you probably played with microbes when you were kids. I remember these. Seen these on TV. Was there any other effect like from Well that loud sound there was another shuddering roar as the air ripples once more. You all take another Maybe point of mental start. damage. Maybe we should stop breaking things. We're making loud noises. I think it's the loud noises. I'm not normally one to say this, but Maybe I think we it's, should stop it with the breaking stuff. I think it's the loud noises that's causing it. Quick question, uh, Ryan, out of character. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, a men if I have a mental cost of two for an action uh, and I have an edge of two, does that mean I don't pay any? No, the cost is not. You can't put edge okay. towards that. Okay. Cost has to be spent in order to uh, All right. make something happen. Got it. All right. What are we doing, guys? Are we climbing or are we walking? Uh, I say well, we climb. If we climb, we might just climb up to the same floor, can't we? Dude, um, I don't it's know if I could... us wherever it wants. I don't know if I could do physically climb that fire. You've Sweet. done it before. I have? Remember? Yeah, we climbed up, yeah. in, climbed up into Big that tree. tree. That's a tree. That's not a rope. Have, didn't we do some kind of rope climbing? I can use my feet and my hands to climb a tree. I don't like put knots in the rope. It'll make it easier. You're gonna put a knot like every couple of the feet. 
t- to. I can do that. It'll take a little bit of time, but I can do it. I mean, we don't. We got plenty of time. We're not in a rush. Do we have plenty of time? Are we not? I don't in a rush? know if we those have are plenty those are two time. things that are categorically untrue that you just said. I'm just hesitant to try to climb. Would you feel better if you here, if here. one of us I... had had you had you on a, on our back? No. Would that help or not? I, that would I not help. Off, that would be uh, worse. I take off the Samhain, um, the Samhain, excuse me, uh, uh, I, I take off the ring. I say, here, use this. It makes you stronger. And I give her that, that ring of strength. Okay. It makes... How does it make me stronger? It's a ring. It's Magic. Oh, you oh. literally have magic, and you question. <laughs> well, these I don't know. It didn't know it was magic. You don't remember her doing the thing where she tried to push or tried to summon a fireball, and then on the truck, and we then we weren't there. We just saw her like on top of the I truck don't doing know stuff. What she we were super doing. far away. <laughs> we have no, no idea, idea what she was she doing there. Me. Oh, okay. Um, it doesn't summon fire though. It's why don't we? Here's I... the thing. Here's the thing. We've only done this a couple times. Mm-hmm. Why don't we take off walking one more time to see where it teleports us? If it continues to teleport us, then we'll try the climb. We can also just, just look for ring. stairs. I've been Two. looking for stairs. If we see stairs, I definitely want to take them. Or I, I definitely want want to we see them. We should see if but... this place has some form of layout map as well. I mean, we also said, so yeah, we're looking for that, stairs... Can Some we ha- sign okay. that we, okay. we can determine where we are? Magical can we look for that here's, as we move? Here's an idea, okay? So Go that we it. can cover as much area as possible. One person stays hand on wall or, or railing, whatever. Next person holds their hand. Then they spread out. And this person oh, holds their hand. We chain across so that we can touch and see as much area as possible, but we're what? still connected to each other so we don't lose each other in the mist. What if we connect each other with the rope? We could also connect with the rope. That would give us more space, too. I don't know if the rope would somehow get severed, though. I would be very uncomfortable not being able to see the other people. Judging by the size of these walkways, us holding hands and stretched out will give us plenty of room to be able to see the stores. The Span. Speaking as a speaking as a person who has walked in the mall and <laughs> and has had to pass people who decided to take up the whole damn thing, walking side by side. I just don't want to 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 get too. I agree with Quinn. I, I agree with Quinn. I would rather hold. I would rather physically hands. hold hands than a rope, especially with how tricky this place is. So why don't we try that? All right. I was okay. so certain that. Aaron was about to suggest that you split up. Oh, <laughs> I thought for a second. I was, I was, I was so like ready to be like, Quinn, are Here's you out crazy of your mind? Idea. So we can cover no. more ground. You guys go that way. We're going to go of this way. The railing. One of you I'm not going to climb. Wall. I'm going to just peace out. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just all split up it. and one of us hopefully finds it. <laughs> No, okay. we'll hold hands. We're gonna hold hands. So here's the plan. We're all gonna hold hands and like stretched mm-hmm. out. One of us is gonna have our hand on the wall. We're looking for stairs. We're looking for something that can show us like a map. Yes. Uh, we're looking for crayfish computers. Periodically, because I know they're not working all the time, but periodically I'm just gonna have the binoculars and I'm gonna be throwing up infrared vision just to see if I can get shapes and stuff. Okay. We're using everything at our disposal. Mm-hmm. In this, in this mind fuck of a place. Okay. This is just like when I regularly visit the mall. It's <laughs> kind of how it is. So as you begin to move, I'm gonna need another mental defense test. I know you're not telling us what it is, but have we lowered the difficulty at all with all of this? Not for this part. Not for this part. It's just static. Seven. Uh, eight. I don't know if that's a Natural good thing. Natural 20. Oh. Natural oh, 20. Yeah. So, I sorry. Uh, everybody's talking at once here. Um, Nell got a natural 20. Corin? Nine. Okay. Quinn? Seven. Okay. Isaac? Eight. 
Seven, eight, twenty. You know, seven, it's a nat- as another straight. Seven, eight, nine, twenty. That's how you count. Is, yeah. Yeah. So you're all connected via the rope, right? No. No. We're all connected via hands. hands. What's the right, What's the hands. order here? Who's Who's where? I'm got... rightmost. Okay. I wanted yes. to be wielding my sword, and I wanted to be holding the the metal rod bit instead of the other person's hand, and have them hold the other part of the metal rod. No, if you no, if you'd have suggested that, I would have said no because that that completely defeats the purpose of the plan that we had. We need to be holding, which was holding hands. hands. And it's why we touch. said not hold the rope. No, that's I. And Nell can only hold Run. one person's hand. Be the yeah. last one. <laughs> so who's next to Nell? I'm gonna be on the the wall, so I'll be on the innermost. Oh, piece. I was gonna say I was on the wall, but that's fine. You want to be on the be, wall? No, you can if that- you really want to. Because uh, if that's the case, I'll be the one holding Nell's hand, which means I'm holding Nell's hand, not the pipe. Okay. <laughs> and Isaac is between Quinn and Corin as he suddenly mm-hmm. goes slack, lets go of your hands, and falls to the ground. God damn it, Isaac. What did... And that seems like a very good point for us to take our you... break. What did you roll? <laughs> I rolled an eight. I rolled higher than Quinn. If anything, this should be Quinn's time to, to have a nightmare. As a matter of fact... <laughs> Who's going to slap Quinn? <laughs> no, we'll be back here in about 10 minutes to find out what uh, wonderful dreams, I'm sure, uh, Isaac has uh, during this. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Stick around. We'll see you soon. <laughs> oh... And welcome back, everybody. Well, welcome back, Nell, Quinn, and Corin, as Isaac suddenly falls face forward, sinking to his knees, and then splatting on his face on the cool tile floor. You are once again transported back into that vivid nightmare. It feels real enough that your subconscious mind turns off panic sets in, your heart begins to race, sweat begins to drip down your face as you are pulled roughly from the garage. You can see where the smoke is coming from now. There are a number of pyres built, large stakes reaching up into the smoky sky, ignited with still forms of burning people tied to them. This show is not for kids. (laughs) (laughs) There is one unlit one at the end of the row. These people, if they could even be called such, are harshly hurrying you towards it. Corin, Quinn, Nell, what do you do? Actually, uh, Quinn and Corin, because Nell doesn't know he fell. (laughs) Uh, I rolled a natural 20. Can I know he fell? No, that's not what that was for. <laughs> uh, now we'll just <laughs> be, she'll like be holding on to him, but like not wanting to like let go of the wall. It'll be like, Corin, you got what? this. What's happening? Do you not feel Isaac? I look over. The, do I see Isaac just well? You don't see Isaac. Did you keep walking? No. Uh, We were holding hands. We were holding hands. We were holding hands for this specific reason. If someone fell, everybody's going to stop. Isaac let go of your hands when he fell. Then we would definitely stop. Yeah. Did Nell stop? I have a tight hold on Nell's arm, her (laughs) hand. So Nell goes another couple feet before getting pulled to a stop. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nell should just feel me, like, not move anymore. What? What happened? I think we got a person down. The fog Ooh. is getting thicker. See, this is why we hold hands. Corin. Yes? Can you find Isaac? He's attached to my other hand. I haven't let go. <laughs> he let go? So I just Are know you going to slap him or what? I can't. I have your hand. We should all crowd around very close together so that we can see each other, everybody. So can we all just, close in? 
takes a moment, but you can, yes, if you want to. Cool. Cool. Everybody close in. I'm going to crawl, like, along the ground. Okay. You find Isaac rather quickly that way. The fog getting... You said the fog's getting thick, thicker? Yes. It's harder to see. It, the sound mm. is getting more and more dead. Put the stuff under his nose, or I'm going to slap yeah, him Yeah, I got the peppermint out in my, okay. in my hands. Isaac, the scent of burning is offset by the sudden arrival of a wave of minty freshness. Go ahead and give me a uh, mental defense roll. Eleven. So, Isaac stirs slightly, but he doesn't wake. Isaac, you are pulled. I slap him. I slap him really quick while he's stirring. You are pulled up onto the pyre. You feel the ropes bound across your wrists, tied across your chest as they step away. There's a sudden jolt of pain as something hits you again. Go ahead and make another mental defense roll. Eight. You're not sure what that was, but oh, they're they're bringing the torches now. They're getting closer. How can I use this defense check? I. So he doesn't wake when I slap him. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Nell's Nell's got some. I'm gonna go. Damn it, Isaac! And you're going to hate me for this, but I'm just. I'm going to lay a kick right where it where you don't want it. Well, I'm kneeling on, on the, the ground. Point. Okay. Well, out of character, I will say, don't do it too hard because that can actually kill somebody, <laughs> especially if you know what you're doing. So. She won't do it that hard. Uh, okay. She'll pull back a little bit, but it's going to be a sudden jolt of pain. Cup check. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah. <laughs> taps him with. That would still hurt. Just like taps him with the top of the foot. <laughs> So, <laughs> John, one more. <laughs> I, I want this to be a nat one just Hopefully because I that. want it to be like... <laughs> Hopefully that dropped it down another. Okay, there we go. Nat 20. Finally. <laughs> the sudden jolt of pain from your groin surges you forward. You actually sit up very quickly, gasping for air. You can still smell that weird mixture of peppermint and smoke as you come to your senses panting hard. I look at Nell and I go, that is, that is only to be used when we've tried <laughs> other everything stuff, else. okay? <laughs> Every, everything else. Like, just now was fine, for future reference, only to be used after we've tried stuff. Can, can you get up? Can you, can you get up? Are you okay? I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, you're speaking, so. Um. Yeah. You're 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 coherent. That that's better than not. Um. Let's uh. Let's let, let's try and lift him up together, Corin. Well, I'll take one hand. You take the other. Why don't we get into a store? <sighs> okay. Put pull him up. I'll I'll kind of. Uh, go back over to the wall. You kind of reach out and you feel a different texture. It's rough and it's misshapen. It's not the smooth tile or glass that you had been touching before. Now it's rock-like, but it's cold. But not cold enough to actually be stone. It doesn't feel like stone at all, in fact as your boots scrape against the carpet below you. Guys, I, I don't think we're in the same place. I mean... The wall feels different. Big shock. Big shock. You kind of look around. That light is still shining in from above. And you can see the silhouette of a Ferris wheel now looming over you. What? Around the first bar now? What? Oh, where are we? Okay. <laughs> this is not working. 
I mean, I don't know what else we can do. This also proves that climbing would not. No, I don't either. think it would have no, worked. It teleported us the next because time. now we're in the middle and we'd have, we'd have climbed through the fog anyway. So mm -hmm. what do we see around us? We see the Ferris wheel, like... The Ferris wheel, there's these large kind of walls, but they sort of slope up. And there's one that is kind of arched over. There's like a little cave, but you can see the light through it still. Fog's kind of thinner here. The grass... Grass? No. Carpet. It's green, though. That's weird. And we, um... Is that a windmill? Do, yeah, do, do we have any type of uh, the things that could make, like, a fan? You guys got any parts in your, your, your little kits there? Maybe we could try and blow the mist away. We would need a really big fan. Well... If we can make us each our own individual fans. Maybe there's a store that sells fans. Are we gonna I don't find think a it? little I don't think a little fan's gonna do it, but I think you're on the right track. What if mm. what if we could turn on the ventilation system to the mall? What about that thing? We can, but can we find it? That's the thing. Whenever mm. whenever we try to go somewhere, the mall's gonna take us somewhere else. Isaac True. points up. Look what up. about that thing? Let's see. What does he see? What does he see? What and thing? Isaac is pointing at the Ferris wheel. The Ferris wheel as That's a, a fan? Fair. That's a Ferris wheel. As a fan? Like if we could Do I, do I make... see the controls for the Ferris wheel anywhere? No. Can I look for the controls for the Ferris wheel? If you'd like to. Would anybody like to help me find the controls help, for the Ferris wheel? Isaac, to the yeah, Ferris wheel? Isaic helps out right as well. To it or... It's kind of nearby. Go. What else are we going to do? We'll head towards it, at least. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. All right, well, this is where that big bird was, so if it's going to kill us, if it's real, then... Oh, that was on the roller coaster. I mean, it's down here. Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. So you kind oh, of right. wander there's, around. There's you do find a limit to this area before you hit the Ferris wheel. You appear yeah. to be once again on an upper level. The Ferris wheel controls and entrance appears to be one level down from you currently. And it is through some quick deductive reasoning you realize you are in a miniature golf course. Can I see the controls? <clears throat> Not from where you're currently standing. You'd have to go down a level, probably. But I, you said I, you said we know that they're below us. You can see the place where people would get on below you. That's where we gotta go. Thank you. Now's the time for the rope because we're gonna climb down. All right. Oh. Is there a place to tie the rope off? Yeah, there is plenty of spaces to tie the rope off. Cool. Let's do it. About how much rope do we need? How far down is it? Like... It's only about 12 feet. Oh, all right. I'm going to cut yeah. off about 12. I'm going to cut off about 10 feet worth of rope. And yeah, then... that'll do it. Take all right. Because we're not getting this rope back. No, yeah, I was like, so yeah, cut off just enough to where we can get down and then drop a little yep. bit, and then if we need to, we can jump back up and climb up. We'll do, yeah, we'll do 10 feet of rope. 10 feet should be fine. Okay. So you cut the rope, you tie it off. Who's going over? I'll go over Nell first. goes over. Oh. Or... Nell Nell beats me too. Nell's quicker Nell's, than I am, Nell so if Nell beats it. me to it. So. so Nell, you quickly descend down the rope. I like it. I was going to go, I would be like, all right, let's go. Ah, like <laughs> jump back. Cause she just kind of like jumps over it. <laughs> yeah. You are on the floor below. The rope is still dangling in front of you. Can no longer hear your me. friends. Why do I see anything in the immediate vicinity? Looking around. You're only at two. Nope. You don't see anything. Just do the we see her? Do we see her? 
Uh, Nell disappeared into the fog below. Can I pull on the rope? The rope begins to rise up in front of you, Nell. I grab it. I just kind of tug a little bit. There's resistance both ways. Okay, I'm going to climb over and I'm going to say, I'm going to climb over and I'm going to say, hey, climb down the rope before I disappear to to Quinn and Isaac. (laughs) Now you barely hear that. It's like it's on the other end of a long room. So I climb down. Corin, you get to the bottom. Nell's there. This fog is very dampening to sound. Yeah. Which is not good. You sound like you're way over there. Yeah. Quinn will start climbing once she sees him down far enough that she can get on the rope, too. Climbing down is no problem. You make it to the floor. Both Nell and Corin are there. I think it does the same. Okay. You're the last one down, but you make it. You all now stand in front of the uh, controls for the Ferris wheel. Isaac, come help me. I have a feeling this is going to take a lot of brain power. Like to say, if we were judging our brain power by points, I have a feeling you and I are about to lose a lot. Uh, Isaac, (laughs) first thing Isaac does is he pulls out the battery again and has it at the ready. Let's do it. Quinn. Yeah. Go right in. This is where- I'm not getting on that thing. Are you kidding? No, nobody get on it. That's certainly not what we're doing right now. I'm being quiet. Corn can't hear me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm right here. But Quinn was not being quiet. She was like, <laughs> I'm not getting on that thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. So When's for the, the last p- time you're on Ferris wheel? Never? I, I would like to, with Isaac's help, first of all, determine what controls make it spin. As step one. Okay. I feel like that'll be the easy part. Well, first things first, there's no power. Battery. You using the battery on this? Yep. That's all we got. All right. That's all we got. GM intrusion. Okay. Uh-oh. And we're going to send this one to Corin. Corin, do you Give accept this Isaac. GM? Okay. Didn't even have to get through the asking. <laughs> Not even going to. Let's do this. Let's do it. All right. We all we all want it. That's the thing. We all want it. You take the battery, you kind of set it on top of the controls. It starts to glow. And do 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 the droning booming sound of Calliope music starts to echo across the chamber that you're currently in and out across the mall proper as the wheel begins to spin on its own very slowly at first then lights start to flicker on it illuminating in the fog creating these strange yellow green and pink halos as the gondolas began to dip downwards passing by the point where you could jump on and swing back upwards I want to jump on. Okay. I look Give at, me a speed I, test. I look at no. <laughs> Difficulty is five. I'm gonna kick her in the gut if she tries to jump. Yeah, on. you're you're dealing with the controls here, so no. Uh, well. I, I okay, she's okay. I'm gonna continue doing that. what I was gonna do then, if, even if she gets on. Down to a four. Um. This this doesn't count as speed defense. No, it does not. No, it's just more of a timing thing. It's an active Um, thing. I haven't taken acrobatics yet. Um, I am going to spend another two points to reduce it again. Okay. Down to a three. And I think that's all I've got. Because I don't think any of my other stuff is helpful in any way. Eleven. You time it perfectly and jump 
into one of the gondolas as it spins by Quinn. You were the only one to notice this. Corin and Isaac, what were you going to attempt to do? You're trying to figure out what makes well, it spin and not spin? I Go ahead. Have, I had an idea. Go ahead. Well, I have the modified... I just added them for my tier up, the modified device where okay. I can make it move above its rated specs for a limited time. Okay. It's almost... That's, it's like that's exactly what we wanted to do. Yep. <laughs> So the two of you are going to try to make it spin faster, essentially. Yep. Much, much, like much faster. Exceedingly fast. Like a fan. Okay. Yep. Blowing away fog. May have made a bad decision. You may have made a bad decision. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, you did. It's almost. It's almost mm-hmm. as if you weren't listening when oh, we no. literally it's talked about like this when we were upstairs. Making this into a fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, when we actually said we were. <laughs> if it isn't the. Consequences, consequences of my actions. actions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you so don't. He's... I think you have to spend some mental points to oh, do that. That's four, yeah, yeah, that's four intellect. And I will, on top of that, I will spend three intellect for machine efficiency, which allows me to up the object's level by two for one minute, if that helps. So the two of you get to work on this very quickly, figuring out the controls. Quinn, what do you do? She's gonna, she's gonna be like, uh, 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 we're concentrating. We're not listening. We don't hear. Uh, <laughs> um, we're in the zone. It's gonna be guys in the zone. Cor, cor, cor. The I, wheel begins Isaac. to turn faster. The music actually speeds up, almost as if it's somehow connected to the rate the wheel is turning. It doesn't get louder necessarily, but it becomes more discordant and overlapping notes on top of each other. The lights even begin to glow music. a little bit, uh, a little bit faster, a little brighter too, as they blur past you. Nell, in the gondola, at first it was nice. It was like this big upward swing as it picked up speed, and then continued to pick up speed. And then continue to pick up speed. You actually kind of get pushed into one of the seats as it begins to spin, and you get around in about ten seconds. Oh, well, Isaac, I wanted to. I wanted to see um, what I could see from the top of it. You would see. Oh. oh man, that would have been a good thing to. But, that would have been a good thing to relay to your group. That would have been a good thing to relay to your group. So that was more of an afterthought. Yeah. So, Unfortunately. The was get on it. This is my uh, favorite part of the episode so far. It is yeah. fog <laughs> that you see. Um, you see fog. Lots of fog. As you are pressed into the seat by centripetal force, as it begins Oof. to continue to go faster and faster, that 10 seconds down to 5 seconds. And it is oh. having an effect. It is circulating the air around it. But the... Music is getting louder now, and suddenly that ripple effect shakes against all of you, except for Nell. Quinn, Isaac... Because it's like she's about to die anyway, I'm not going to hurt her. No, because (laughs) the fog has gone from around the Ferris wheel. It is being pushed out from that space, and her current sp- uh, spot that she happens to be in. She's not taking mental damage. She is going to take a point of might damage, but the rest can of you ask, take a point of mental damage. Can, can I ask uh, Can I ask a question? So Absolutely. you said it, it It looks like it's it's starting to push the fog out. Does it look like if it keeps going like this, it's going to continue to push the fog further and further out, or does it look like it's found its It's stopping building point? up, but that hit of reverberation sounds out and you hear something moving beyond the ferris wheel something large well i had another idea but it would take things to a whole nother level and i don't know if we want to do that now quinn what are you doing uh, she was i mean she was yelling at the guys like basically i don't the, even know if we the, could hear her now because i assume moment them. she was just like the the she would have ran over to them once they didn't hear her after the first time she yelled their names out. Okay, so you rush over to them, <laughs> grab on to Isaac or Corin. Just like, Nell's on the Ferris wheel! 
So as she's saying that, I'm kind of enacting my last bit of my plan. And I was just going to take the battery from Isaac and literally just set it on the controls so that it gets like maximum power from this thing. Okay. I think Nels might be screaming at this point. Cause I, well, because I feel like, so this, I don't know Nels on there and I'll ask Isaac because it's his battery, but I feel like if there was a point, like this is the point we'd want to use as much juice from the battery as we could to get this thing going at hyperspeed. Not knowing that our friend's on it. Is that, exactly. the, is that, the, is that the thought process you would have? I, that's exactly what my thought would, process would be. Okay, so as we set it there, I feel like that's the moment Quinn comes up and is like, Nels, Nels on that, to which it's like, no, I don't think we can. Of my damage. I was like, she's, where is she? You hear? Ah, 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 ah. No, ah, no, ah. no, yes. no, no. There's no way to stop it now. As if Jump on cue, there is a sudden grinding of metal as the emergency brakes kick in. We need to move. We need to move. We need to move now. The structure of the Ferris wheel gives out as it cracks off its frame and spins like a propeller out into the park before crashing <laughs> crashing into other <laughs> rides and coming to a stop in a loud clatter. Nell, we're going to need a speed defense roll. Hey! Difficulty wow. is seven. Oh, God! Wow. Well, technically yeah, I get, six. Uh, yeah, I get the one free reduction. I will yep. reduce it again. To five. Two points. And I am proficient in speed defense. Okay, that's uh, going to be down train. to a four. Um... As Corin, I'm so scared for her, but as a player in this game, I'm so excited by this entire <laughs> yeah. this entire moment. And I don't so great. think I have anything else. I do have one point of armor for my leather jacket. I don't think that'll help with the chuff, but it might help with the damage. Okay. Um, so I think, I think we're that's at four. it, though. So yeah, we're at a four. Go ahead and make the roll. High, roll high, roll high. Uh, I rolled a nine. Oof. And I don't know if I want to use my. I think this is a time to use the XP. This okay. would I'm be a good to time to use that re roll. I'll take Can that XP. Make, make that What's, roll. What'd you say the difficulty was? Four. Four? Down from seven. Yeah. That's... Uh, regretfully. My reroll was a three. So. Yikes. You know, if you add those together. Technically. Not how it works. Um, there is this. Okay. No. As the brake mm -hmm. engages, there's a sudden slowdown as you are slammed into the other side of the gondola. And then the gondola itself stops swaying back and forth, and for a moment you seem steady as the entire thing fixed in position, no longer uh, on a wobble to keep you on a level plane, tilts up, and you are almost thrown out of it. Oh. You grab onto the rail, though, as you spin around twice more before it breaks off its moorings, and twirls out into the park. And you are able to unfortunately let go at the highest point. Oh. <laughs> you try to time it, but it's moving too fast as you fly off into what little fog remains, soaring a good hundred feet and crashing oh through the roof of some building. You hurt. Ah. Some building? We're in a building. What? It's another building. It's in the amusement park itself. Ugh. Oh, no. So no. How much damage do I take? You take All 10 of it. might damage. All of it. 
Oh. So that's one that carries over to my speed. So you're at zero might? Yeah. Oof. You lie there. Wind very much knocked out of you. <laughs> you know, you can take an action to recover and use your mask. I do. Well, I do before you do that... Mm. Yeah, I don't know if you're unconscious or not. You're not unconscious. You're Ooh, very badly yet. injured. I'd say so. You've had a rough go of it. You have been injured almost, <sighs> I think, lot. more than anybody. Yeah. That's my job. In, but she's followed know. through a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's your again, signature move. And once again, she fell yep. through a building. Let mm -hmm. me ask you this. Which of your characters have seen Jurassic Park? Probably Isaac. Definitely. Uh, uh, I mean, Unlikely. possibly. Right now, right now. Probably. Definitely. Okay. So, Quinn, Isaac, Corrin, you've seen Jurassic Park. It's been a long time since you've seen it, but no, you haven't. So, Nell, you hear this loud, guttural roar of something nearby, near you, outside the building that you're currently in. You're still not really sure where you are. Your head is ringing. Your eyes have stars dancing in front of them. Your arms aren't moving quite right. But for the rest of you, as you watched that spin out in a crash and come to a stop, the music stopping, you hear this very familiar roar, very much like the Trianosaurus from Jurassic Park, but with more of a oh, trill God. to it. As something begins to move and stomp inside the park. Well, something's awake. We should get into a into a store or a building. The right fog now. begins to lift. Did anybody see where um I have Nell no idea. ended up? Did anybody see where Nell yeah, did, went? Was anybody able to tell where she went? Well, what kind, of, what kind of test would this be? It's a mental test for Isaac, Corrin, and Quinn. Oh, goody. Oh, here we go. Oh, we're going to use this one. Uh, that's a seven. I'll put some, I'm going to put some effort into it. Can I use my, my thing? Yep. Oh, okay. 14. 14. 15. Okay. John, what'd you get? Oh, I got a seven. Seven, thank you. So, uh, Quinn and Corrin spot the nail-shaped hole in the roof about 100 feet away from where the Ferris wheel crashed. You think she might have flown in there. You're not 100% sure. Whatever that is, it's moving down there. You can't quite make it out yet, but... The fog is thinning out. It's it's dispersing all around you. You see you're on the second floor north side, according to that sign over there. Quinn, you're startled as all of a sudden there's a Charlie Brown statue right next to you. Like we're no longer in the park? No, you're right where you were before. You haven't transported. Okay. Okay. But the fog is dispersing and all of a sudden there's this statue that you didn't notice before. Oh, it up. Oh. <laughs> that's the thing. I think that's what I dreamt about. It doesn't move. In fact, it's all gonna... of your heads have the slight ringing to them, but you feel much more clear-headed all of a sudden. Nell fell through that building. We should probably get over there. She may be dead. Hope. I mean, I hope not. I hope not as well. <laughs> let's, let's book it over there. Yeah, Isaac yeah. grabs the battery and places it back in his bag and then rushes along with corn and yeah, as i say since there's no fog and our friends heard i guess we're probably gonna book it you can yeah. either try to drop down the 14 feet to the first floor drop a rope down or try to find stairs can we since there's since the fog is lifted can we look around stairs, stairs? looking around you see you see stairs they're Boom. a little back towards the north but you can go Boom, you also run. see stairs going up it's they're these metal jagged sharp stairs there is the first step is not even with the rest of them but you quickly hurry your way down and as you're hurrying down you see that there's another set going up to the north side food court and business pavilion all right 
Okay, we've okay. So this plan worked for now. Let's make this quick. We got to get to Nell, okay. and then we got to get these stairs and get up there. I don't know if this fog's gonna come back. Also, there's a T Rex in here, or at least something that uh, sounds something like one. similar. At least. Yep. You hurry down, and you charge southward into the park. Nell, as you kind of regain control of your arms. You take your mask, you put it on and take a deep breath. It does barely anything. You feel a little better? Maybe? If your head would stop ringing and oh, yep, nope, you're pretty sure that arm's broken. Question. Yes? As an action while we're running, can I also do my recovery? Yes. Okay, because I'm real low on intellect at this point. Yeah, same here. Now, Hell yeah! Six! Now, you open your eyes a little wider, trying to get a bearing for where you are. There's no more fog in here. You, you could have sworn a moment ago there was some. You huh. look around, you appear to be have, well, you crashed through a picnic table. But it looks like a party room of a restaurant, like something your parents would have rented out when you were a little kid. There's colorful, colorful mm. characters on the wall. There's uh, what looks like glass on one side, but there's these wooden shutters over it. What do you do? Huh. Well, you said my arm was broken? Feels that way. It's not, like, poking out broken, though? No, the bone has Just... not extricated right. itself from the skin, so... At All least right. there's that. <laughs> it's not a compound uh, fracture, yes. so that's good. Okay. Ah, yeah, it hurts. Um... I'm going to... look for... medical supplies... in this... in this restaurant. You kind of head out of the party room looking around for like a first aid kit and you do find a first aid kit mounted on the wall. Oh, oh good. Metal case. You unclasp it. Pills? It is empty. Uh, God. I chuck it at the wall. It's mounted to the wall. Oh. You try to sl you slam the little metal door I shut. And slam the door. Punch it. Dent it in. At that point, you hear <sighs> that roar, but closer. I you feel the ground going... tremble slightly as something is drawing closer to you. What if. I'm going to hide. Hypothetically speaking, what if there was a glass of water nearby? <laughs> or maybe a sink. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Nell's gonna hide. I'm going to hide, yeah. All right. Okay. There's not a lot of cover in here, but you're able to turn over one of the tables as something shadows against the glass. You got this briefest look out an open doorway down into the park. There was actually a platform and then stairs. You're on sort of an intermittent level between the second and first floor. You're elevated. And something is blocking out the glass on that second floor. Blocking out the light. The very faint sunlight trailing in from the sunlights above. As you turn the table over, you realize maybe it's better to be quiet for a second here. Quietly, carefully turn it over and slump down behind it. Quinn, Isaac, Corin. Running through the park, there's the wreckage of several rides tangled up amidst each other. And as you round the corner towards where that building is, you see what's blocking out that glass. You've never seen one in person before. The stories from people who have come to town, who have talked about them. Don't do it. This is do so it. much more terrible. Don't do it. <laughs> Easily... 50 feet long from the tip of its snout to the end of its tail almost as wide on the wingspan large almost almost an entire floor high 
you see a dragon. Oh, God. Yeah. Its scales a mottled mixed pattern of green, black, and white as it sniffs the second floor and turns. Hide immediately. Okay, you're going to try to hide? Hide immediately. If they don't fall, yeah, like, I grab, they, I grab, looks, I grab like their shirts. Like, as soon me, as we I'm... see that, and it's just like, it's just like, hide immediately, hide immediately. Yeah. Okay. The, I'm going to need a stealth test, essentially, from everybody. So it's going to be a speed uh, roll. We're going to call this a difficulty five. Hey, I'm going to put... A uh, couple, couple things of effort into that. That was a four. I have one edge. That beats a difficulty five, right? A four? We'll get to it that. Makes it, t- makes it two points to spend an effort, right? So you have one edge. I'm... It's one edge. Yeah, it's two points to spend yes. an effort. Okay. I'm just always so bad at the math of this, the, the edge and effort. Okay, so I spent one. To okay. lower it for me, I'm up, I'm I'm lowering it by two. Okay, same. So two so two efforts. So lowered it by two. <sighs> All right, Aaron, what'd Rolled you get? Up. Six. Tyler, what'd Eleven. you get? Eleven. Eleven. No, that's good enough. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Clarity, what'd you get? Is that I nat- got tw- another natural twenty. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Jeez. The dragon disappears. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm going to give you a choice. Uh, Nell can either hide so well that the dragon's attention is going to be drawn away from her and to your friends, or Nell can kind of fail upwards, where she remains hidden, but she causes a distraction that prevents it from turning its attention towards your friends. I prefer the latter. Okay, so as you're kind of looking over the top of the table, it's sniffing against the shutters, and it starts to turn away. As it moves, you get startled. Sorry? I said I chuck a napkin holder to distract it. You don't know they're out there. You're just hiding. The leg of the table that you are kind of gripping onto, white-knuckled with your good arm snaps and you clatter to the ground causing enough sound that the dragon turns and slams its head against that wall shattering all the glass inward and breaking the shutters so that you can finally see, well if you weren't now under the behind the table the cover and completely hidden you'd see what it is Isaac and Quinn, as Corin kind of grabs onto you and tries to steer you towards a nearby photo booth that you can duck inside, both <laughs> of you trip at the same time. Yeah. Comedy of errors. Face plant <laughs> on the floor. But something, the little bit of sound you make is offset by something as the dragon slams its head against the building, completely distracted by what's inside by the tasty morsel that is Nell. <laughs> you're able to get up and quickly duck behind cover. You're pretty sure you're hidden well enough that it won't see you. At least not immediately. So like, yeah, um... They're all just dra- in the photo booth just going... Dragons? <sighs> okay, so... We gotta get to Nell. Cannot fight this thing. Uh, no, no, no. What is? So, what does the path look like to Nell now? Like, is there a way for us to like? Can you know how them all? Like, is there a way for us to like go around some stuff and like come in that building from like the back way? Ooh, it's it's hard to say. You've never been here before. You could try to go off to the the east, no, the west, you're kind of turned around, but you're pretty sure it's the west, and loop all the way around a quarter of the mall and come up from the other side, (sighs) maybe. You could try to sneak through the wreckage and debris from all these wrecked rides, but you're not sure if that's safe, you're not sure if that'll make sound, but it might be quicker. Can I, uh, can I suggest that, um, I cause a diversion? 
Um, yes. Shatter. My dream thing. Or the or. I can giant, just giant make snake fight. That with snake the dragon. Something. One of those. But far enough. Things. But far enough away to where it has to has to go over there to it. Yes. yes. We and we yes. book it while it's distracted. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. whispering, by the way. I, yes. I gathered as much. Stage, stage whispers. <laughs> as you're doing Six this, though, whispering. the dragon is now trying to claw the side of this building down. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. No, do you okay. hear this destruction happening on the other side of your barrier, but you remain able to be hidden. It's trying to figure out what it heard and what's here and what woke it up. I'm gonna go. For, I'm gonna do the snake. Okay. Now I believe this is a silent image, isn't it? Uh, let's see here. You pull an image from a dream into the waking world and place it somewhere within range. The dream lasts up for up to one minute. It can be tiny or fill an area of immediate distance in diameter. Though it appears solid, the dream is intangible. The dream is static unless you spend physical interaction or sustained interaction with the dream uh, shatters into uh, if it's like interacted with it shatters uh, it doesn't say anything about it being silent okay we'll give it sound then. just say, it just says it's a dream it's you pull an image from a dream what's the range <clears throat> I don't know if it has. Does well, it, it says it... within range, so it has to have a range of some sort listed on. Uh... Let's see what the because I just I mean I I typed in the stuff myself, so I might have left out. Yeah, ranges would be like immediate, short, long, very long. Um, I'm looking at the adept now. I'm looking. This isn't adept. This is awakened dreams. Oh shit! I shout. Dreamcraft. One minute. I'll type that in once you figure it out. It says within long range. Okay, long range. Oh, hell yeah. There so, so you pick, it doesn't... Yeah. You pick a spot towards the corridors. Wait, not between us. Uh, like so it wouldn't yeah, run past us, so it would run us. like... Right, right, right. right. And... Yeah, towards the west that... It, way that yeah. leads further into the mall you mm-hmm. conjure the image of the snake the serpent queen you pull it from your mind this black mode of dark energy that you toss out it sails and takes form landing with an audible thud as a 30 foot long viper uncoils itself and hisses a challenge to the dragon who is instantly drawn to it. Uh, it roars back in challenge and charges. Immediately we just take off. Yep. Just take uh, off. Uh, running away or running yes. to the building? Towards running towards the building. Using the distraction to get to Nell. No. Okay. Nell's building. You Doing. go as fast as you can. Nell, the dragon is moving away. You watch the serpent kind of undulate <sighs> as it charges. Quinn, you know that usually the second something touches one of your dream creatures, it will just vanish. So this may not last terribly long, but as you charge forward and around the corner, Quinn, do you spare a look backwards towards the fight? Uh, yeah, she's actually gonna try and uh, maybe pull uh, something from its own mind. Uh, I've dream thief steal a previous dream from a living creature within short range. Am I short or still is You long are now? not short range. You're long range okay. from the creature at this All point. Alright, well then maybe not. Save that for she later. She won't. I mean, she's just gonna do her best to maintain it. Save that for, it. If it, for if it somehow gets right in our face. Yeah, exactly. if it's... if uh, oh, She's gonna just keep running and try to get to cover, because at this point, if it attacks it and it'll be a little disoriented she hopes and then she could cast a different one in a different spot if she needs to okay so as it attacks it the dragon pounces its wings expanding outwards to glide and pounce onto this thing almost like a feline (laughs) (laughs) and 
Quinn, at that cat. point, you feel <laughs> this sharp pain rack your body as the dragon sinks its teeth into the snake and begins to toss it back and forth, not destroying the dream, instead hurting you for one point of mental damage. Uh, okay, it's eating my dream. I can do that. Keep running. Let's just keep running. We can figure this out later. It slams the snake against the ground as you round up those stairs. Nell, do you look out? I do. The dragon is gone. Is the snake fighting back? The snake's trying to. (laughs) It doesn't seem to be doing much. Nell, you look out. The dragon is a little bit off. In the distance, you see it's it's a freaking dragon. You've never actually seen one. You hear footsteps charging up the stairs. And you see Corrin, Isaac, and then limping behind in a bit of pain, Quinn. No, no, no. As it. Hi, that was the ride, wasn't it? Her just hair is. Take just... off running. So we can go out. We go out the other way, like out the back, like into the mall. You. Hurry down the stairs, you snake past a yellow building. That's where you were before. It's it's the Mikob store. <laughs> Had to check my notes. Uh, the Mikob store, you pass by in that. The dragon is still back there. Quinn, you feel one last grasp of pain. And somehow you know you'll never be able to conjure the dream of the Serpent Queen again. R.I.P. As we're running, I'm like, Quinn, what is happening? Let's what is going on? one out for the snake, Queen. There's a little trickle of blood coming down Quinn's nose. Quinn, what's <sighs> happening? What is going on? Let's right? just keep going. Let's just keep moving. Just okay. keep running. This, keep is running. It. this is important. As we you pass the Mycobe store, there are escalators that lead upwards. There's also a corridor that leads to another blocked entrance of some sort, some darkened area. Uh, if you're oriented right, that's got to be the hotel. What do you do? Let's regroup. Let's go that way because I don't think it can... Because it's the dragon's fucking big, right? It's very big. Okay. So, like, the corridor, does it look like if we get down there, like, without smashing shit, like, it can't easily follow? It can get down the corridor. It probably won't fit through the doors. Okay, let's do that, and we can regroup. Okay. So, you charge down the hallway. You can hear smashing and stomping back in the park. You get to the doors. (coughs) They are chained shut and locked with padlock. I got a bolt. I got bolt cutters. Do we got any like other? Is there other room uh, stores or? There's doors? bathrooms to the right of you, uh, that appear to be open, but dark. Bathroom. Do the bolt cutters look like they could cut this? Yeah, up? absolutely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it if it can do it. Okay, quick. Corin just quickly pulls out the bolt cutters. Give a very adrenaline-fueled snip as you're able to chop through one, then two bits of chain, pull it off. You push through the door. Who is the last one through? Who shuts the door? I think we'll probably let Quinn and Mel get in first and then slam the doors shut. Okay. So the last person through, as you're turning and shutting the door... It is glass, but it's tinted glass. Blue glass. And as it shuts, you see the dragon's head come around the corner and begin to make its way down the corridor that you just traversed. I... I... I hold my hand back, look behind, and think... Is there, like, a way further in? Do you want to chain it again? I've got, like, a... I've got a chain... We've got chain and... I have a lock. I just start waving my hand. I was like, chain is not going to stop that dragon. Let's go further in. I don't think it can get through those. I don't think it can fit in here. As you you turn to head further in, a strange sight greets you. You're in what probably at one point was very posh hotel lobby. But immediately in front of you is a ring of statues. 
of Charlie Brown, all facing inward. It's a terrible nightmare. This kid is creeping me out. There's a statue of Snoopy at the very center. And it's in the lobby or like in the in lobby. The... Are they moving? They are like, not moving. Would uh, we know hotel? who Charlie Brown is? I don't remember if we established this. The Some hotel, of you do. The hotel makes me very uncomfortable. I've the had dragon's not, coming. Not this great dreams about this hotel. Let's go, guys. Let's go, guys. We got, we got scary statues, but we got I'm a dragon behind us. Left. Like... I'm going to take the scary statues. As you uh, push forward, having to drag some of your party members, you're able to find cover behind uh, couches and half wall a little further in as the dragon gets to the doors and pushes the one that you came through open. Its head snakes in. From your vantage points, you can see it, but you don't think it sees you just yet as it sniffs. It turns its attention to the statues. And then reaches out with its jaws, grasps one, picks it up, and pulls it back through the doorway. For it turns and heads back into the park. Was it Snoopy? No, it was one of the Charlie Browns. It couldn't reach the Snoopy. That's fine. There's plenty of those. Guys, oh, that was a dragon. Uh, yeah, that was shit. Uh, yeah. That was a flipping dragon. Uh, first things first. Nell, you're not dead. Right? That's good. Do that with your other <laughs> arm. Are you... Yeah, how are... Like, oh. are, you, are you okay? That's fine. Tell the truth. I mean, if you, you got Nell's uh, left arm is motionless at her side. Did you break your arm, or did you have? Did your arm break? I should say that. I broke it. Okay. It hurts a lot. Um, <laughs> okay, so it's broken. Come over here so bit. we can. So I'm over here so we can, like. Can I put it in a stent or something? It, would my hedge magic be useful since I can mend a broken object? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. I don't <laughs> think living bone counts as... It's, well, it's, it's that an is object. A, that is an object. A coffee cup versus an arm. One is infinitely more complex. Actually, if you wanted to use it, you could turn her arm into a coffee cup that is mended. And then could she turn it back into an arm, but the arm no. is fixed now. Nope, it oh. is just dead ceramic <laughs> for Would the you rest like a of her coffee life. Cup arm? <laughs> well, I pull out the drumsticks and put them on either side of my arm. You're able to quickly make a little splint, and just in time, you notice the dragon coming back. You wh is... quickly hide again. Hide, 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 hide. Are there doors to go deeper? Like There's doors to the outside, but there's a metal shutter in front of them Never on mind. the outside. We got a mission. We got to stay in here. There are stairs leading up to the second level. And you see I that take... there's a skywalk out on the second level to the Oh, that'll lead to, a, to an amazing visual moment. I bet. Yeah. Hide. Everybody hide. Everybody hide. As you hide, the dragon once again snakes its head in, easily reaching 20 feet into the room, grabbing another statue and pulling it out to return with it to the park. Um, is it like Charlie Brown? Is your pain, how's your pain level? It's like, uh, like a seven. How's like, your pain levels, Quinn? I'm fine. Um, she just she's gonna pull out one of the morphines and says, "Like I think, I think it might be an opportunity to use this." Probably. Um, <laughs> so she's gonna give her some morphine, a here, little bit this, of it. Here, take this drink of morphine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she's I'm got done. she's got syringes. Yep, you don't you have to drink, drink it. Alright. Yeah, I'll happily take some morphine. <laughs> takes a little bit for that to kick in, but you're feeling much better and less yeah. inhibited. <laughs> <laughs> Please. 
please don't use that as an excuse to do things uh, that would cause more pain to yourself. This is this is only temporary. Okay. The dragon's coming back. Hi again. Hi. The dragon sneaks its neck in, just barely grabbing another statue. Kind of pushes its bulk against the frames of the door to get it shattering glass, but not breaking through as it snakes it out and takes its last one back to the camp. Okay, guys, let's just take this. Let's take the stairs up. Like, let's get out of this Where's room. Where's that? That's gonna take us out of the the. It's gonna I mean, take us out of this room that he keeps how, sticking his head in. We, we gotta get out of the. Gotta get back into the building. Up we go. We're in the build. The stairs. You said the door goes out. The stairs just go up to the second level, right? Stairs go up to the second level. Looks yeah. like there's a third level too. Yeah, we're still. And in the there is a skywalk the off a platform on the second level that leads off to the south. The that seems unnecessarily dangerous. The skywalk doesn't even. That's doesn't the way we're lead, going. It doesn't lead back to the the mall. It leads no, the skywalk the leads away from the mall. Yeah, uh, but the stairs up the lead back direction. towards the mall. Stairs up, then, man. Ah, stairs let's, up. Let's go up, let's go up the stairs. You quickly hurry up the stairs. You get to the top just in time as you hear the dragon back again, pushing against that first floor. While he's doing that, let's, let's, you said there's a third level as well? There's another set of stairs that leads up a third level, but you do see that you can get back into the mall from this level, too. But once again, the doors are chained. Should we go up to the third level? Because we got to be on the third level anyway. Yeah, we got. to... Can we get up to that with the well, stairs I mean, that we? You can. I mean, we can try. If not, yeah, we'll just let's come go, back down Let's here. go to the third. I'm definitely yeah. Third let's, level. Let's do that. I want to get as far away from this thing as we can. So you get up to the third level. Are you trying to find some place to shelter, or are you trying to get back into the mall? We're back like the mall. obviously back keeping in. an eye out for the for the dragon, but we're trying to find a way to get back into the mall. And since we. No, we got to be on the third level. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. We have a mission to accomplish. So we're trying to be like quiet and listen and look for the dragon. But yeah, that's ultimately what we're trying to do is get back in. Okay. Prim, can I get mm -hmm. that ring back from you? Oh, yeah, sure. I'll give you the ring back. <laughs> she might need it. She's one arm down. I'm... I'm probably going to use it immediately if you that's okay. Right put it now. on your right hand this time. You surge it up. You only get two points this time. Punches right. the dragon. I'll put it on for face. you since your other arm is in the splint. You Dragon's head comes in and she on. just, she just great with the working. punches the dragon in yeah, the face. Yeah, but you're not going to be able to lift your arm and put on a ring because your arm is broken. <laughs> Even with morphine, you're not going to move time. it. You're not going to move it. <laughs> you get to the doors that lead into the mall. They are chained from the other side. <sighs> Do we feel okay smashing the glass? No, not not right not now. Hang on, let's look at our let's look at our options. So they're chained from the outside, just like on the second level you said they were chained from the outside. As far as you could see, you were a little yeah. bit away from them. So they're chained on the opposite side of the door of us. Yeah. Can I? Because sometimes you can with chain with chain doors. That uh, can I push the door open at all and it like actually open a little bit to where yeah. I can get the bolt cutters through to cut the chain. If your group wants to spend two XP for a minor benefit, you certainly can. Two XP. I have none. I have none. I have one, so... Yeah, I've got three. I can go Isaac? check... Yeah, I can go I check five. The... I was like, I can, I can go check the second... If somebody else wants to do the other. We can go check the second floor really quick, see if it's chained from this side. I doubt it will be, but... You hear the sound of breaking, rending metal I thought we saw the, the first second floor. floor. was already the same. You kind was, of think chains. you spotted it, but you didn't really go investigate. Yeah. I don't see why it would have been chained differently. Can we just, uh, can I just do shatter on it? Can I smash the glass that would, while the dragon cause a whole bunch of noise. Both of those things are going to cause a lot of noise. Now, now smashes the glass as the dragon is He's already noise. making noise down there. So what is Nell using to shatter the glass? Her sword. 
point or butt? Um, blade. Okay. It. So that is not going to work, but you do slam the metal against the glass and cause a loud thunk. Now, what the fuck are you doing? You hear the dragon roar. Can you use your brain for a second? Okay, well, this, 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 I think I think we need to go. You shatter on it, blow the blow the thing away, and then we gotta run. Okay. And we have less time now. Shatter. On what? The on the 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 chains. Or one of the links. One of the links blows outwards. Does shatter the glass. That's it. Yeah. Blows <laughs> apart. <laughs> Uh, you now have an open door. <laughs> Let's go. On. go. You hear the dragon clawing, scrabbling up the stairs behind you. Not sure oh, is what's it there. Fitting. <laughs> run, run, run. You run. run, and you come to an intersection. You could go straight. There is what appears to be an overlook, uh, and a, a large open space with lots of tables, or. You could go right or left and go around the ring of the mall. Which do you want to do? I don't suppose we see the computer place at this point. You see that you're on the south end of the mall. Oh, uh, we need to go around. Let's book it then. To the right. All yeah, right. let's go. Tear off to the right. You hear the dragon roaring behind you, but its roars fade as you put some distance between you and the dragon. And I think that's where we're going to end it tonight. I have. Uh, oh, I didn't get to do my Jurassic Park moment. That probably wouldn't run. Worked. Must go faster. Must go no, faster. No, I was going to pull out. I was, I'm saving it. I want to pull out, if I have to, one of my flash bombs and like hold it and then throw it or something. <laughs> Although yeah. dragons are smarter than T-Rexes. So. Yeah, dragons' eyesight isn't based on mm -hmm. movement. Or is it? You don't know. Well, never fought you don't know before. what they are. They're fantasy creatures, so... True. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, thank you very much, everybody, for watching tonight. I hope you've had as much fun as we have had uh, playing. At least I okay. had playing. Uh, I don't know, players. That yeah. was, it was rough. It's a good time. <laughs> but this is a good kind of thing. We're going to die. <laughs> it's a possibility. Um yeah. Episode title tonight, episode 12 was Slumbering Beasts, and well, I, I guess um, <laughs> it's not slumbering not anymore. anymore. You, gotta be proud as a, you gotta be proud as a GM. You had a group of people that you put a very powerful creature there, and they didn't immediately be like, let's fight it. They immediately went, we can't win this. <laughs> We're like, hide! We gotta do something else. Yeah. I have a Hail Mary plan that will likely kill now, but it might I mean, save everyone else. I mean, you survived being thrown by a Ferris wheel that was going way too fast, so... The building yeah. broke her fall. Fine. And building, building, table. It's like a cushion. Yep. <laughs> it's like a wooden cushion. So, uh, announcements. Uh, we will be back next Friday for uh, the continuation of the finale here of... Uh, after the fall, this is the final arc that they're in currently, so we'll see if they're able to skirt the dragon, if they end up having to fight it, or what's going to happen. Um, aside from that, uh, I might be streaming tomorrow night on Twin Minds uh, Twitch channel as we once again explore the inhospitable world of Icarus. Um, players, do you have any announcements you would like to make? I um I'm still trying to get thing get my get gameplay uh, working on my Twitch, but I will be streaming on Monday for um a movie review stream on store at uh, twitch.tv slash storytime Rowan. And then next Wednesday we have a new episode of Dungeons and Dragon Types, the Pokemon themed tabletop and actual play podcast that I do. And that's going to involve the culmination of the bug catching contest or <laughs> getting close towards it. That's fun. Nice. Yeah. Catch a thigh cream. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Rust monster, maybe? <laughs> N no idea. <laughs> well, uh, very cool. Looking forward to that. Anybody else? Announcements? 
I don't know, I got a bunch of stuff on DM's Guild. Go look at it. Got a bunch of cool stuff on DM's Guild, actually. Yeah. Thank you. You can also... there. It's on, I'm talking about them on my TikTok now, so... All right. You can find all this stuff on my Twitter. You can find the links um, and everything. John, Mika on chat wants to know where they would search for this podcast. They are, it is on all podcast providers. Uh, we are hosted through a Squarespace um, site. Uh, our network, Gumby Cat Networks, Gumby as in, um, it was a reference to the T.S. Eliot poem. So uh, just look up Dungeons and Dragon Types in your podcast provider, or find us on social media at D and D Types on Twitter. 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 D N as in D and, and. Um, D, so full full and and then types. Um, let me just. I toss those in chat. Okay, good. All right. Ray. Well, players, thank you very much for playing tonight. Congratulations on surviving thus far. Uh, we will see if that happens to continue into next week. Um, and. <laughs> Uh, for our lovely watchers, thank you very much for joining us this evening. We hope you've had fun, and we hope to see you back next Friday. And I think, with that, we're we going to close didn't do XP. It. Thank you for reminding me. I would have forgotten. Sorry. No, no, it's important. We need to give you XP. So, uh, everybody's getting one XP for encountering a creature that none of you have seen before. Again. Uh, I'm also going to give another XP for everybody uh, simply because you've had some really creative problem solving stuff and great teamwork this episode. Mm -hmm. Did anybody accomplish a goal that they wanted to meet? Their character wanted to meet, rather. Not uh, my personal goal in life was to not die to a dragon. So, so oh, far, so good. Work in progress. So. Oh, really? Yeah, in work progress. in progress. Really, really every day. I should get an XP for that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Another you day do? not dead to a dragon. <laughs> well, let's give it to the end of the day, huh? Um, <laughs> did did Nell have a uh, a goal of flying because you kind of flew? Mm. She, she yeah. Was that flying or was that falling with style? Yeah. Falling with style. She didn't accomplish any <laughs> long term goals, but she did accomplish some short term goals, heat of the moment goals. Now, unfortunately, XP is for a longer-term goals. Uh, all right. So, there remains one XP left to be given. And that is for the MVPC. Who players is the most valuable player character of this session? I would like to nominate Corin for, her, for his work on the uh, computer. Figuring out where we need to go and what we need to do. Mm. I don't normally do this, but yeah, I'm gonna nominate myself. I was tech yeah. savvy as I was tech savvy as hell with the computer and the windmill. Absolutely. The only other one I could think of is yeah. me with the with the battery, but Corin did most of the stuff on the computer. None of us were quiet. <laughs> the computer told us to be quiet. Like we were just so nope. bad. Like all of us were just so bad. I don't. Exactly. Know. So we told all the Corey. stuff we had to do, though, like there was no, especially with the windmill, with the Ferris wheel. It's just like there's no way to be quiet about this. We have to get rid of this fog, and the only way to do it is to I turn mean, this stupid thing on. Technically, the fan was my idea, but you that's fair. Make it happen. That's fair. I, I mean, you did make the technical stuff happen, which was good. So I agree. So we're we're going with Corin. Yep. Yeah. Dealt. All right. And with that, we are at the end of our series for tonight, or show yeah. for tonight, not the series. We'll be back with a couple more episodes at least, I think. Cliffhanger. Uh, yay! Cliffhanger. <laughs> Rawr! Dragons coming for you. All right. Uh, we will see you back next Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, in the meantime, have fun and uh, watch out for dragons. Bye. Bye. <laughs>